What'd you say? Yes, and they can hear you. We are live on Twitch. Ask John Cain. Is there any Twitch people? <laughs> Reboot mic and mute. Um, I'm going to be using that one right there, you guys. Channel 1. Is Sorry. Can you guys see me out there? What's up, everybody? In Twitch land? Twitch land. Let me get up. Right here, Reese. Right here? Right here. All right. Hey, dude, your hair is so good. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah. Gotta win this race. Let's win this race. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is how it's gonna go down. Hey, hey, so after this one, I have an interview with your hair. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I got the waves for the babes and the curls for the girls. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Like this? Yeah. I don't know if you ever MC before. I've never done that a day in my life. Oh, shit. I want to welcome everybody to Conversations with a DJ. My name is Brother Reese. We got my man, Mr. Tay. Say hello, right. Tay. Yeah, I'm behind the uh, boards over here. Y'all see me in a minute. I'll pop in and out. Y'all see me. Don't worry. We have the executive producer, Norma Jean. She's in the house, but she's back. What up? What up? They can hear us. All Thank right. Shook Knight. Shook Knight. I like Shook. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you guys. This is our first guest. They're our Black Latino brothers. They're coming from straight from Oakland. DJ it's Malachi and DJ Technique. Welcome to Conversation with the DJs. And then, you guys know we're all about food. DJs love food, and we love chefs, and we got one of the best chefs, hands down, man, in, in the Bay Area. He goes, his name is uh, Chef Eddie from Awevo Food Creations, and he's gonna be cooking us uh, some delicious food. He also has his, uh, his uh, trusty sidekick, V. She's in the house too as well, and she's also a baker, man. We're gonna need some great treats, and we're gonna talk to her about her company as well. So uh, let's get to the cooking portion of this, and then and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit, all right? Good. All right. Chop it up, chop it up. Introduce, up, y'all. Thank have, you guys very let, much. Let, yeah, let's, let's have Eddie introduce himself. Yeah, it, yeah, introduce yourself, Eddie, man. This is our first show, so oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, we're just, we're doing this, uh, you know. Yeah, it might be a little bit rough, but yeah, we're, yeah, working, yeah. we're, we're working, working it out. Eddie's yeah, he, mic though, right? Yeah, Eddie has a mic, yeah, yeah. Eddie has a mic. I got the <laughs> mic right. His is number two. Number two. <laughs> got the mic. I'm like a poet, don't even know it. <laughs> All right. All right, what's up, everybody? So I'm a chef, Eddie Campos. I've been a chef for about over 20 years in the business. Uh, been all up and down the West Coast. Uh, right now, I fly out throughout the nation just to go ahead and cook for all the executives. Um, I always like to play with my food. Your mommy always said not to play with food, but look what happens when I do. All right, everybody's gonna have a great meal tonight. We got a really nice salad. It's gonna have some fresh berries. It's gonna have a Marciano cherry vinaigrette, some perline pecans. I already hooked them up with a little bit of something earlier. We got some big tomahawk steaks too. Ooh. These things are making my arms tired carrying them all day. All right, and I'm um, looking forward to everything and definitely finish off with some sweet dessert. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and pop it up. And uh, Yes, I am single. No, just kidding. <laughs> Ooh. I'm totally kidding, totally kidding. Chef Eddie, <laughs> a Scorpio. Chef Eddie, Scorpio. Your sign. Okay, there you go. Scorpio, <laughs> long walk on the beaches, you know what I mean? He likes a woman that, uh... <laughs> nah, but I'm really, really looking forward to this opportunity. I'm, uh, you guys are going to love the food. And you know what? Let's just have some fun tonight, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, really quick, man. Uh, can we give a shout out to some of the sponsors of the of our show? Please? Yes, indeed. Oh, definitely. So tonight we got Mario with 808 Beats. 808 Beats. Hey, taste the base. This is some of the best wine that we have, and we made a nice sangria with it right here. Eddie, where is he? Where is he located at? Is he... To the glass. Uh, he's up over in the Sacramento area. Okay. Uh, yeah, but he drives down. He drove all the way down here to make sure that he could hook us up oh, with his man, wine. Give us a couple it. bottles. It. What's the web, do you have the website? Do we know the website? Oh, we can post it's, it it's up. It's 808 Beats Wines. Yeah. Beats so Mario, thanks a lot again. Appreciate everything. Um, some really good stuff, man. I'm gonna have to try to take another bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. I'm really thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you. We're gonna yeah. have some really bomb food today. We in this together, Eddie. We yes. in this together. Well, yes, it is. That's the Black yes. movement right there. Right. So, so Eddie, you want to get started and uh, hit the kitchen and show us what you're doing? Definitely. Let's right. rock. Let's, let's rock it. Let's do All it. Right. Come on now. This ain't really the truth. It's good, huh? It really is. 
Can't go wrong with a good sangria, yep. especially, you know, nah. we're, we're getting there. It's almost summertime. You let's, know? let's just call it summertime at this point. The vibes in this backyard now, since, make uh, it like summertime. Eddie, you ready? To oh, shh. I'm ready. Too bad I'm not cooking spaghetti. There you go. <laughs> this man stays ready. Right. Hey. Get, get, give, him an, give him an instrumental. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna kick 16 bars real quick. Yeah. All right, so what? Um, we're gonna start off with a nice salad today. All right, you know, berries are starting to come in the season. We're gonna be rocking it out. And uh, we have this right here. This is arugula. Uh, arugula usually has like a little bit of a bitter, peppery taste, but I'm gonna counteract that with a little bit of sweetness, right? You know, get that nice bitterness and just give it a pop right in the mouth. All right, so what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna get this arugula and just make a nice little pop. Right, and fellas, you know what? I teach online class. Y'all trying to impress the ladies? I got you. I am, man. I'm not trying to impress the ladies, bro. <laughs> All right, so we get some ladies, nice. She doesn't, she doesn't need to be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> we got some strawberries right here, right? Let's just jizzle them all the way around. Cool. Some nice raspberries right here. Look at these bad boys. That's real healthy too. Oh, definitely. Makes you feel like you're healthy, right? <laughs> Now mine are here, the blackberries, all right? I like cutting them just because they have a nice presentation on side of them, so they just look really nice. All right, get a little blackberries up on there. Yeah, usually you don't see folks cutting them up, so. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Good pro, good, good pro tip. Right. So now this right here, everybody kind of already had some of these. Oh yeah, I had that. These some praline pecans, all right? Little extra uh, sweetness to it, you know? After me making it, it's pretty sweet, but now it's like a diabetic sweetness, right? <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real, bro. <laughs> All right, let's mix that up a little bit, and then I just like to drizzle these around, right? Now this right here. I was going to ask you about that. Oh, that looks like a concoction that's mm -hmm. going to be the, the So y'all know Marciano cherries, right? Yes. We made that into a vinaigrette. It's the real one. That ain't the one that you be getting fake on the ice cream sundae. It's, <laughs> wow. it's the real deal. All right. Wants to come out or what? Being shy, man. Uh, what are you? Right. Well, I'll just try just to dress it, just to kind of see where we're going, because that arugula is mm -hmm. really bitter. Okay. Right. So this is going to count right here. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's with the white yeah, balsamic see, vinaigrette. Okay, see, and I'm not really a salsa person like that, but this out of the oh, let's do something else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just like to drizzle this right on top. Get all the berries, making sure some enough get drizzled up on there. Right. So what? What's the prep time to do something like this? Oh, it was quick. It probably took me about like ten minutes. Ten minutes? Wow. Oh. Yeah. And you know what? You're impressing everybody because you can be like. So we have here a little bit of wild arugula salad, and we have some fresh berries, some praline pecans, and a marciano vinaigrette. Right? Oh, man. Like, what'd you just say? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. So that's a salad right there. Look at that. All can right. you uh, uh, see that camera up there? We can show it. Wow. There we can go. Can you reiterate what the dressing is? Someone's asking. Oh, yeah. It's white balsamic vinaigrette, and it's mixed with marciano cherries. Thank you. Right? Wow. I'll teach you guys next one how to actually make the vinaigrette. Okay. Nice. Well, there you go. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, I'm the one that you would need to teach. I'm the bachelor here. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got that salad going. I'm going to make everybody a nice little family style a little later, but the final one for the next thing. The next thing right here. Well, all right, here we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, see, here Damn. it comes. Here it comes. Look I need this. two hands for that. You need two hands. Can you help, bro? Oh, uh, look at that. Ooh. Just put a big well, boy. Just put a big boy right like, here. Oh, oh, right there. You, know I mean? <laughs> you felt that shake. I didn't fall. That was a meat. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Yeah. Hey, can you see that meat tape? Put it on yeah. Hey, we had an earthquake the other day, but this is the real earthquake right here. You dig? So right here we have this tomahawk steak. All right, so this tomahawk steak, it's actually the ribeye with the bone in there, oh. all right? So y'all like, what is ribeye? Y'all ever heard like, technically it's kind of like the prime rib restaurants be serving, right. but it's okay. gotta be a prime cut. Right. This isn't a prime cut. 
that, that, I ain't got the money for that, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? There's a tomahawk steak. It just, it just looks dope, right? Like you coming in, you're like, hey, what's up, y'all? What are you growing? That Whoa. right there, what's up? No said, no said. So what I like to do is very basic, all right? Salt, pepper, oil, okay? I kind of already got them a little uh, mixed up just because I wanted to let the salt penetrate inside the meat, but I'll show y'all real quick on how we do it. All right, so we got our oil right here. I like uh, just regular olive oil. It don't have to be extra virgin because uh, extra virgin has a really strong taste to it. All right, so just regular olive oil. It's called pomace olive oil or just olive oil. Drizzle it up on top. I'm not drowning it, you see that, right? I'm just kind of just a nice drizzle. And rub that baby, you know what I mean? Hey. Young tender right there, man. You know what I mean? Got a little bit of kosher salt. I like kosher salt just because you can actually see where it's going and it doesn't have the uh, iodized or for the iodized table salt. It's kosher salt, it's really clean flavor. Look at that. We're gonna just sprinkle it up on there. Nice. Yes, I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, I know everybody's waiting for that, bro. Yeah. You, you can't buy this. <laughs> and then pepper, right? It's just a little coarse ground pepper. All right. Now making sure that you do all sides, right there too. Look at that fat cap right there. That. Uh, see, even okay, even okay. So okay, yeah. okay. Uh, it all needs flavor. Not just right? both sides, but all four sides. Yes, dude. Now, mm -hmm. Chef, how long the you do you do this? And before you cook it, how long do you let it sit? After you I like it to let it go to room temperature. Room temperature. So it's probably about a good, you know, 20, 30 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. Makes and sense. We're going to drizzle it right on top, too. Nice rub down. Salt and pepper. You guys see how I'm keeping this one just for the meat and this one for salt and pepper. I ain't trying to mix it up and contaminate that. Okay. A little pepper. Right here in the back side. Right. A little bit so. This presentation by itself is just awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's straight up. It's straight up. Yeah. All right. So we got that bad boy working. All right. I'm gonna change yeah, up. That small piece is yours. <laughs> just you know right now. Man. Hey. Not the first one. Better half. <laughs> so what do y'all see me do is wrap the bone. We gotta wrap the bone because we don't want it to burn, okay? So when we pull it out, it's gonna have a nice color to it. Presentation side. All right, we got it nice and tight. We got a nice hot grill over here. It's at 450 degrees. Okay. Woo! All right. Yeah. Just gonna pick up the tomahawk. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Woo! So this other side, you guys see how one already working, like they do on TV, all right? They learned it from me. <laughs> so this is on very low right here, and this is a higher setting. So what she's doing is, it's cooking, but it's not burning. You see, it still has a nice grill marks. It ain't all charred up, pretty good. right? All right. <clears throat> so you let this, this hand right here, push it down a little bit. This is gonna help with your grill marks, all right? You can see something flaring up. We're gonna pick it up and we're gonna do a 10 o'clock and a 2 o'clock. All right. Okay. This aroma, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so we got that. This aroma is kicking. I could do it with my hand, but you know what? Just gotta be safe right here. All right. So we got the 10 o'clock. All right. And 2 o'clock. All right. Pushing it down. I feel like I should be clapping, bro. Every time you turn around, I just gotta be clapping, bro. Man, the rumble, I don't know what to do, but I wanna clap. <laughs> 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 I'll start dancing. Do you can clap hard enough. Hey, he can rap, he can dance. <laughs> so when you're cooking, what's uh, what do you like to listen to? What, what gets you inspired? Now, this oh, is DJs. Man. You know that's the question we got. What, Damn. what gets you going? And B, uh, this is the question for you as well. Yeah, you got to answer that too. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you like to listen to that motivates you? You know what? Actually, music goes with the food, right? So, like, if I'm, like, you know, doing something Mexican, I'll do, like, you know, suavemente or something yeah. like that. Right. Okay. But, but, you know what? It's like something like this where I'm just chilling and, you know, grilling. I'd be illing. 
<laughs> I like more of like an old school funk or like, you know, like the Barquets, you know what I mean? Or like oh, P-Funk, okay, you know what I mean? And like, Barquets. <laughs> you know, I like, you know, hit and run just, for, you know what I mean? Just kind of getting okay, down. Elbows like, up. Every now and then, right? <laughs> Got that, you know, lean like Ooh, a chill thing on it. <laughs> we all be leaning on that. So look at this right here. So I had it on for a little bit. Don't that look pretty, man? Ooh, Come yeah. On, man. Right. Oh yeah, look at that. So we're gonna put it back on, right? Let it chill for a little bit, and to keep an eye on this bad boy over here. All right, so we got that on a low flame. We got this on a nice hot flame. Hey, that little small one is just yours too. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Look at that right there. They gonna go to feed up. I got you. I'm malnutrition. I got you. You're gonna eat good today. I'm Malachi. I'm Malachi. I'm malnutrition. All right. But me, what do you like to listen to as well? Yeah, yeah. You didn't say anything. Oh, she's like, oh, well, I'm not going to answer that question. Wait, do we need a mic on beat? A lot of similar music. Oh, okay. When he's jamming, I'm jamming right on the side of the Same vibe, that's what's up. All around. And will you guys do events, like, let's say, corporate events, or you guys are doing, you know, games or have Is the vibe pretty... Serious or is it, or do you guys kind of like lose this to the pizza cooking and, and getting there to the ready to push the food out? In the kitchen, you know, we go in there, we like <laughs> rocking it, right? <laughs> but we were, you know, once we pull out, it's like, hello, how you doing there? Right. Oh, hold on. Hello, how you doing there, Chef Eddie? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, you gotta have fun, but they gotta know that when you're business, you know, you're serious, but when you're in the kitchen, you're rocking. All right, that's right. right. Yeah, you gotta just have fun, man. <laughs> Cooking, you know, it's so much fun, and it brings out the soul, right? right. Sure. Just like music, right? There's right. soul, there's soul in the cooking, too. Absolutely. So right here, I have a little bit of a chorizo fat. Ooh. <laughs> Look at it, you got juice to that chorizo fat. Huh? We're gonna make my version of chorizo con papas, but we're gonna eat it with our steak. Yes. Right? See, Norma so clap, big. Norma Brooklyn clap. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, usually, don't they, don't usually they clap. I associate <laughs> chorizo con huevos y papas. So uh -huh. breakfast. Oh yeah. But I'm getting a treat. Oh definitely. I'm getting a dinner style. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, buddy. Shout out to my, you know, I know, I understood everything he said too. And shout out to my topless Tuesday crew because they know what time it is. <laughs> this is, this is I'm, yeah. I'm, saying, hey, I'm just saying. The topless. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. So we're here. We've got this heating up a little bit. We're gonna throw the potatoes on there. Okay. All right. Y'all see how I'm not using the same tongs with the meat and the you know the veggies around like that exactly. Well, even though we're at home, we gotta practice safe, right? Right, yeah. right, yes, yes. All right, so we get some new gloves. This is, this is the, the Colombian chorizo that I've uh, yeah, 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 speak on that. Yeah, because yeah, I've that never heard of it. Yeah. So, like, different parts of, like, Latin America, they had different kind of chorizos, right? We had, like, the Mexican chorizo that everybody's pretty familiar with, right? We had the Spanish chorizo, which is one of my favorites, too. It's more drier. Um, it's more of like a charcuterie style, so it's kind of like, you know, fancy, you know, eat that some Django cheese and whatnot. Um, but the Colombian chorizo I had when I was in New York one time cooking, they took me to this Colombian restaurant, and I wasn't really too familiar with Colombian food, right? So they said, there's a bandeja paisa, and I'm like, <laughs> say what? I'm like, hey, homie, like, I'm from Cali, bro, you can't come up to me like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Right, so what you just told me, it's a huge plate. It has like arepas, it has pork, uh, deep fried pork uh, belly. It has like egg and beans and then the chorizo, right? And I was like, dude, what's this, what's this chorizo? Like, bro, it's Colombian chorizo, it's a different level. It really was. So every time I get to have a chance to get it, I definitely get it, all right? Nice. So you guys see how I just heated up pan, walked away, it's nice and hot. I could see the fat already, how hot it is. It's not gonna burn though. All right. Okay. So we got some potatoes here. We got some baby Yukon uh, gold potatoes, and we got some baby red bliss potatoes. You hear that little sizzle, right? All right. This is not a healthy meal. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, not I, trying to, we're not trying to be too healthy. The salad's right, already you know. healthy by itself. <laughs> Oh, put 
the type of potatoes that uh, you're going to be serving today? So these are the, the papas con chorizo. Uh -huh. So it's so the red bliss and the baby Yukons. Uh -huh. Right, I'm letting these heat up a little bit and I'm cooking them with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of the chorizo fat. Because mm -hmm. fat equals flavor, yeah. right? That's why I've been trying it's to like tell like the ladies. Like <laughs> they do down south. Right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everything cooked with, uh, with some lard or some fat. Definitely. Like, you know, tortillas, we use lard. You know what I mean? Carnitas, we use lard. Baking, you know, we use shortening, we use lard. Or butter. Butter makes it better. All right. Y'all saw that, right? Look at that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to look. Ooh. I mean, had it all on. <laughs> Reese's uh, ground on this floor down there. He'd have been mad at me like I'm wasting potatoes. <laughs> so we're gonna have those cooking for a little bit, right? Yeah. While those are cooking up, I'm gonna get this grill. It's still nice and hot. All right, we got our steaks over here chilling, right? We're gonna get some asparagus. All right. Ooh, I like asparagus. Yeah, a lot asparagus. of people love asparagus. Asparagus. Yes. So what I like to do is lay it out evenly, right? If you go too high, it's not going to get seasoned well. So I already put a little bit of olive oil on there. But I'll show you all what I did real quick, okay? So I'm going to get a little bit of olive oil. It's a nice little drizzle, right? You all see that drizzle in action, right? Yeah. The drizzle for shizzle. Yup. <laughs> There's that. And a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. But look it. Y'all make sure to turn it. All right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Already got that. Turn them around. A little bit of salt. All right. Salt's best friend is pepper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Same color as your hair. Same color as my beard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> best friend. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, um. No. Same color as <laughs> Chase Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He got that in there. He got that in there. He got that in there. Right? Now look, we're gonna get the asparagus. It's already seasoned up. A little trick that we have here. Oh shit! Thank you, sir. Got it. Yep. Look at that. We're gonna get all these right here. Look at that. And just put them right on the grill. Uh, yeah, because there's sometimes when we be dropping them, things be falling, you know, and they can't get up and all that, right? <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So those are going, my asparagus is going. I'm gonna put this first one I started right back on the heat. Right? A little TV magic here. Now what I like to do is I like butter. Alright? Yeah. I see all that butter right there, ain't it, man? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, even the butter's pretty. Right? Come on, the way you cut it all. Oh. Oh, it. Oh, hey, look at that, look at that. Like that? Backhand that right oh, there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let that toss He's up. Good. He's good, huh? He's He's good. Good. All right, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. When I grow up, I'm gonna dash salt on my food just like you do. <laughs> now look at asparagus, right? There's a couple ways to do it. You can just go ahead and rotate it like that, but you know, for all your amateurs, right? Look at this. Pick it up and turn it. Pick it up. Turn it. <laughs> you can already see the getting the grill marks on there. Right? I'm gonna go back here, get these tongs, flip it up. Right? The bad boy's back. I got my potatoes going, right? I got my asparagus going. We're not freaking out or nothing yet. Alright. Look at that, that butter, right? So that You know, what's papas without chorizo? And then, so we got that butter, we got the potatoes, we got that salt, we got that pepper. I'm gonna make a little well. Okay. All right, see how I'm making that little well right there? That's where I'm gonna put the chorizo. Why am I doing that? I want all that flavor from the chorizo to get mixed with the butter and uh, go from there. Let me ask y'all, what's like, what is your go-to for a meal? Like when you like, when you're trying to take out a girl, I'm sorry, your wives or whatever, right? <laughs> what is it something you're like, you know what, baby? 
Because tonight we're going to go have this. Uh, I guess that really pertains to my court to me, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, for me, man, I'm, I'm a huge Mexican food fan. Okay. So it's got to be something like that up over the fruit hills or something like that. Okay. That'd be for me. You know, uh, normally I eat a lot of food, so it depends. Like, you go, go eat Mexican food, you know? Mm hmm. And I love chorizo and eggs at, at night as for dinner. Oh, know? yeah, it's definitely. So good. You know, we go to this one spot here in South San Jose and, and we love the food. But I, you know what I, I'm, I'm a big fan of? I love Chinese food, bro. You know, okay. Chinese food? Oh. I'm Chef Eddie. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you heard that right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you're like the boss is packing your stuff. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's over now. So Eddie helps. Who are you Oh, so whew. Yeah. all right. So when I started cooking, I went to a culinary school program. I was kind of a juvenile delinquent. Um, I went in it for the girls, like to be honest, I was in high school. <laughs> you see all these, you see all these honeys, right? You're like, I want to go there. What's yeah, up with that? Um, actually, um, it helped change my life. Like, I got into it. Uh, the teacher was actually a really big mentor to me too, okay. and she just helped me out. Like, she's like, "Hey, you're doing good. You're good." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." You just say to everybody. You know what I mean? Right. I was actually good. Like, I actually won cooking competitions and as a high school student and stuff okay. like that. And then I was supposed to go to the Marines, right? My senior year. Ooh. Instead of that, I got a scholarship to go to culinary school. Ooh. The first one in my family to go to like, you know, like a college kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's dope, yeah. So I was excited about that, right? Yeah. Um, but so I was seven, you know, 15 when I did that thing. You know, I worked in restaurants. I washed dishes, worked at McDonald's, all that. But that culinary school went at 17. Wow. Yeah. And I graduated at 19. Oh, thank you. So I've been doing it for years and have fun. And I'm blessed, you know, that I got this amazing job right now where I get to travel, meet new people all the time, and, you know, experience different cuisines every single time. Right. So it's, it's amazing, man. Huh? Who's the most famous uh, chef that you got to work with? Ooh. Or, or, or you mean, like, most you, enjoyable. you go on, like, you know, classes. I mean, I know they have master classes. Do you, have, do you ever worked under or worked under um famous i worked chefs. a couple different other like famous chefs but um rick bayless was one that i always wanted to meet and i got to meet him at least three times nice. right uh that was really really cool uh my boy from oakland uh chef too he was on top chef uh -huh. that's a homie he, me and him always stay in contact too nice. he's got some major talent um but rick bayless was one of the main ones uh uh, I actually, one of my favorite chefs, there are a lot of female chefs, Stephanie Izzard from uh, Chicago. She does this thing called uh, The Girl and the Goat, but she has like six other chains of restaurants that came from that one. So when I got to like go to her restaurants, I went to three of them when I was in Chicago. Right. I was in love with them, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, and then Rick, uh, it's actually everything. She actually does Peruvian food too. Really? Yeah. Oh. And she, she shut me up real quick. <laughs> uh yeah but i go to a lot of uh like seminars and stuff like that up in like texas napa you know new york and i'm always just learning because you know what that's what life's about i was always learning right yeah yeah even if it even as a dj we you know we're constantly learning so yeah no it makes a lot of sense it's like i don't know like there's new music that always comes right, right. and always. i and i throw like the different beats throw you guys off the timing and everything like that too huh? And with us, a lot of times we get a lot of different remixes and re-edits too. That's so, right. You know. I remember I would spend hours just finding the one record that was blend together so perfect in the right key and everything. Like for days, just yeah. hours. That, that digging, brother. Yeah, <laughs> just, just crazy. Now let me guys, let me ask you guys something. How was the going from like records to how it is now and everything's on a computer was that it's more convenient for you guys right but what about like mixing i, uh, I, I, I want to ask mel that because mel came from my school we, we, we did our finals mel, yeah, you did. <laughs> 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 hey, cool, man, right? so 
I mean, how did you guys find it? Did you guys, did you guys do the transition from gonna, vinyl to CDJ to Serato? No. Or from vinyl to Serato? I, I didn't do CDJ yeah, per se. CDJ no, I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of the old grumpy DJ guy okay. initially. Right, right. I was like, oh, I'm not going to go to CDs. <laughs> and right. basically I didn't. But then when the, you know, the, you know, when Serato came around, it just, you know, it made a lot of sense. You know, I was like, wait, I don't have to bring all these crates of records anymore and break my back. Like, wow. you know, and, and, um, yeah, so, yeah, it just, it just totally made a lot of sense for us. Right. Like, I can bring, you know, though, though, instead, yeah, um, there's certain, there's certain, bring? see, I was kind of. I at, at at most I would bring three and a half. Oh, I was okay. never like yeah, I, was I seen people bring like six, seven, eight, ten. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh -huh. was 10 to 12 I was because I was the only guy in the whole night by myself. Oh well, see, yeah, if you by yourself, you would need that many. But no, th three and a half tops. Because honestly, even if I didn't have it, I'm gonna play something similar, and and everything was everybody right. was fine with that. Right, right. You know, but there's so certain songs that weren't on vinyl that you couldn't find on vinyl per se. Right. So, you know, with the you know with the invention of Serato and. and Makes things a lot of easier for us, and, you know, the, and saves our back. <laughs> and building on what he's saying, yeah, you know, with the vinyl, sometimes if you didn't have it, or it's like a rare song, like they right. only made like a, a, like a pressing of only two hundred, right? And, you know, and, and I think you know that. But no, uh, answering your question, no, I I went from vinyl. I, I'm like him. I skipped over CDJ. Yeah, I, I, CDJs. I was not. I was. I wasn't comfortable with it. Okay. But then I was real comfortable with Serato because it was like bringing your whole library with you. Right. And then if you didn't have it, it, you can download it. And for us, it was a vinyl format. Still, I still yes, have a piece yes, of still. vinyl, so, which I'm more. I'm. I'm too comfortable with. Yeah. Yes. You know, right. Right. I, you know, I, even though I can play on controller at times, yeah. and CDJs, there's right. nothing. You know. Right, right. Especially for me, that beats that feel of vinyl. Right. You know? What year was this when you guys made the switch? We made it around the same time. I was a little bit later than, than most folks. Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't say later, but I mean, I forget the exact year, but maybe like about two or three years into, you know, Serato. And then, right. and then when we did it, uh, we were using PCs. We, were, we didn't go to Mac yet. We were using the PCs. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, we were using the. Uh, I was using the PC when I first started, and um, I, I, the reason why I did it because I didn't want to be that dinosaur DJ coming in with a whole bunch of crates while everybody's in there using Serato and the whole the club or the bar or whatever is already set up with the uh, with the Serato, and I'm sitting here carrying crates. Well, you know, before Serato was uh, Stanton had one, it was Final Crash. Why well, I mean final scratch. Final scratch. But I we used to call it final crash because that thing used to crash <laughs> all the time. But see, I, my journey with uh, from vinyl to to digital, I did the CDJs. Um, so I converted all my vinyl to CDJs. So I, but it was a game changer for me because then what I would do is from six, I mean from ten to twelve crates down to four crates with just the hip hop and my R and B because that's you know that's what you really want to feel right. And then I would do the rest of the music on CDJs. And then after that, when the vinyl went away completely, I just went strictly CDJs. So I, I did that from 2003. <coughs> I did it for three years. And 2006 is when I got onto Serato. Okay. And I saw Revolution using it. I got it. He, um, I was so lucky. I was able to go to the uh, Wake Up Show in LA and um, and see him using it. I go, hey, at what the, is the that At thing? the beat, right? No, it was a, at Studio City. They had a. They had oh, a uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm tripping. Um, oh, yeah, Power 106. Yeah. Right, right. No, but this is. They had their own lab. It was cool, man. And they had. It, you know, they had the. Uh, the Wake Up Show logo. You know, Tech had the board. It, it like a radio station. It was dope. And then, uh, Rev will be in the DJ room. It was dope. It, it was like enclosed. They had a glass. Uh, front. It was dope, man. Yeah, shout outs to Rev. That's the. That's the homie. <laughs> Fucking Rev, dude. He's the best, man. But when I seen that, I came home and I told my mom, hey, we got to get this shit. And then I went back man. to turntables, man. That's my preference, too. I prefer turntables, too. Right. I mean, I, I do love my controller. I, I use my controller on the show, on, on my Twitch, but uh, I've been using it so much that me and him did a gig on uh, 420. 
and I was using the vinyl, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to get back to using my turntables. What is wrong with me? I'm forgetting the most easiest yeah. stuff. But yeah. So you have a question? Yeah, Rick Bond is oh. on Twitch. Rick Bond says Rickles. when you guys are talking about crates, but then later on couldn't get into the club as crate carriers for the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then someone, Babs with the biddies, said, I always wanted to be a crate handler. Babs. And uh, Rick Bond is on Twitch, said, that was always the club hookup, grab a crate. DJ G Stacks this is, is true. <laughs> yeah. DJ G Stacks is asking, what is the first record you ever bought, the three of you, each of you, to add to that? You guys are kind of old, you don't got good memory, I don't know. Actually, I, you know what, I still have it. I don't know if, well, it was purchased for me. I have a Sesame Street like ABC forty five, <laughs> and I, st it's, I still have the picture cover for really? it. Really? Was it yeah. one two three four five six? Seven. Was it that one? I, you know, it has Big Bird on it. I'm gonna actually, you know what? Maybe when I get to the house tonight, I'll post it on Instagram. Yeah, I yeah. want to see that. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> true. For me, uh, the one that really made a big deal to me was Breaking the album. <laughs> right. That Chris. The Break, breaking was lightweight whack though I'm just yeah, saying like, was. that wasn't really a representation <laughs> no. of the west coast and I'm just putting <laughs> yeah, it out there yeah, right. it yeah. was and it wasn't you know uh, for me it was I think it was Ice T 6 in the morning so I started later than these dudes right, so right, it was right. Ice T 6 in the morning so you did play vinyl oh yeah I told you yeah and then um, also uh, Posse on Broadway 12 Ooh. yeah that was like my first the, the Godzilla remix no Godzilla remix didn't even I come out I love that one because it first oh, came out with just right. the that's single, right. and then after they came out with, with the, the remix, with the, but it was like a, I think it was like a maxi single tape, and then like that maxi single album, like whatever. And honestly, forget all the Team Zilla folks. Forget y'all. No, it is Team Godzilla. See, okay, we've been having this thing where he's Team King Kong, I'm Team Godzilla. We all know who won that I movie. Like <laughs> yeah, what, whatever, whatever. Uh, G Stack said that his was total devastation, many clouds of smoke. Ooh, that's a good one. That, that's yeah. a, that, he has that record worth a lot of money. What was he like, two? It's a big classic. Yeah, he, <laughs> he said, Was he two? So, I was like 20 Eddie, something when I came out. So what I have here is I have a little oh, bit of infused man. oil with garlic, and I leave the rosemary up in there too. So while the steak's cooking. I like to have it nice and shiny, right? See all that little shine? Man. I'll turn it around, flip it around, and just keep going ah, with it. Ah, right. See. Pro tip. Yes, sir. Holy and man. Oh. Hey, when I get a date. <laughs> <laughs> so this right here, the Papa's from Chorizo is date. almost good. So I'm going to get some uh, pink Himalayan salt. Yeah. The whole rock, actually, right? And I'm going to grade that bad boy. I got pink Himalayan salt at my house, but not not a rock like that. I got it in there, but man. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it on. Sprinkle a little bit on. You don't need to put that much because it's got a lot of flavor in there. Look at Cotica cheese. Okay, I was just gonna ask. Hey, we about to be good, bro. And this is your guys' papas con chorizo right there. Oh All right. Oh boy. Norman. Come on. Oh, here it come, y'all. And look at the color of the bone, just like you said. Yeah. So I'm going to get this high heat one more time and just throw it up on in there. All right. Backhand that real quick. Put my salt back. Someone's asking you a question, Chef Eddie. Yes. Where do you even get a whole rock? <laughs> The rock I got man? The it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of rock you talking about? Hold on now. Specify. What are we talking about? What year is this? <laughs> um, you can get up off Amazon. I go to a, a lot of chef specialty stores where I, I got the homie hookup on a lot of stuff. Right? There you right. go. Um, so what I'm going to do here. Looking for the common folk. For the common folk, y'all go to Amazon. Like everything <laughs> else, right? Oh, look at that. All right. Look at that. Woo. Awesome. While he prepares that, Rick Bond is on Twitch is asking, uh, what's who's the DJ that influenced you guys the most? For me, Joe Cooley. Uh Joe Cooley, um, Jazzy Jeff and uh Cameron Paul. For me. Not Michael Erickson. 
But Cameron Michael Paul. Erickson, Michael Erickson was wrong, but just Cameron Paul for me just. Really? Just, yeah, that's who made me want to do it. Mainly Joe Cool. Okay. Mal? For me, it would probably be my guy Baldy, who I ended up DJing with. Baldy. Um, because it was tangible. We would, well, so let's take it back. In junior high, we were co captains in the drum corps. And this is before I started DJing. He went going, he went to Oakland High, went to Skyline High, went and played in the band. He went to Oakland High. We met up like a year or so later to find out he was DJing. And I was started DJing, so we kind of linked up and became like a crew. Um, Shakedown Productions. That was our first name. <laughs> now, stupid, this I never knew. Stupid, stupid name. <laughs> but what was the name of the group? Shakedown Productions. Oh, yeah, that I'm using our, it. That I'm using our, it. I got to make it. Let's make a business card. Let's make a business card. Some stu- yeah, no, no. Some, <laughs> some, I think he still has a business card somewhere. For real? You know oh, what? <laughs> but, um, and him, because he was tangible, I would go to his house after school every day, and we would DJ for hours upon hours and just practice and when I got to him, I thought, I was like, oh, I'm a DJ too, so let me go to his house. And he was on another level. Like, he was like, when I got to his house and saw him, what he was doing and how he was doing, I was like, oh man, I need to step my game up. This dude's another level. Like, you talk about, I've never met someone who was just naturally meant to be a DJ like he was. And yeah. That's so, dope. That's, let, me, you know. let me ask you guys this. Um, because I've heard you talk about it before, Mal. You've said how um, your connection to music was your father. And it's the same with me. You know, you had your dad introduce you to music, jazz, right. you know, and I'm quite sure it started with jazz with you as your father too. So, and, and, and it was funny because I was talking to Russ and he says his dad didn't give him that connection to music. So, so let me ask you, Technique, what was your connection? To music who introduced you and just fed you music mine is the same as russ it wasn't pops he listened to music but I it was moms moms mm. used to be a singer in the 70s okay uh, and my sister my mom was the one who, who uh got me introduced to like temptations and delphonics and then her luther and her freddie jackson and and uh you know the whispers and all that mom's got me into that my sister was the one who got me into what this man does on wednesday nights is the new way and then um, she also listened to Run DMC and Fat Boys and all that. So I would say my mom and my sister are the ones. And then my uncle, I have an uncle the same age as me. He also was the one that got me into the hip hop. Mm. So it was a blend of those two. So and go ahead, Matt. I mean, I'm quite sure nobody's, I've heard you talk about it, but go ahead and explain to the audience again how your father led you. To my music. parents were born in West Oakland, uh, both of them. And too. at the time, <laughs> they had like a chitlin circuit. And even though they were Mexican, well, my, my dad, uh, <laughs> um, he went and hung out at the blues clubs, the jazz clubs. You know, he was, he loved black music. And so growing up, wherever we went in the car, that was the soundtrack of my life, is black music. Whether it be jazz, whether it be soul, whether, whether it be blues. In our record collection, that was the record collection that I grew up first listening to and messing around with the turntables and you know end up breaking the needle on the turntable even though even though they never knew (laughs) i did that too and i got in trouble though (laughs) no but that's you know that was the soundtrack of my life so i ended up playing drums in elementary school because i like rhythms i mean i had my brother who liked rock music and then you know eventually hip-hop comes along my friends are listening to hip-hop so we're all like i have all these different influences but at the core of it is it, it, it it's, it's all black music for me so you know which was kind of odd like i said because growing up in west Oakland, my parents you know that's they're mexican but they you know especially my dad he listened to black music so right that's the uh, soundtrack of my life what was uh what were some of the early jazz artists he put you on to earl garner coltrane huh. um those were um he liked he liked frank sinatra as well uh-huh. especially vocally as as many folks did um, off the top of my head. It, he was a big blues guy as well. Like, uh, what was the station? Oh, man, there was, was, oh, I forget the, the stations at this point that, that aren't around these days. AM um, stations. Yeah, man. AM stations. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> you know, like a KDIA. Yeah, KDIA, or, uh, Lucky 13. Oh, is it, was it KRE, I wanted to say? There was I a station remember. called KRE. Um, there was K-Jazz mm-hmm. at the time. Um, yeah, that's, you know, he always 
even his work truck always had like a little portable radio mm -hmm. and there was always music playing out of it and then like i said we would drive around everywhere we drove that's what the station was on we wouldn't listen to you know talk radio or anything it was always like music so yeah how about you, Reese? How did you? Uh... Yeah, Pops, dude. Pops was, uh, he was into, uh, he's a musician, you know, so we, I grew up listening to anything from the doors to Santana to uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Musica de los Negritos. That's what, you know, he always said, uh, you know, the Negritos translate play that. con feeling, you know. Translate that. Huh? Translate that. For translate the that Negrito. Yeah, translate Soul that. music. Okay. Black folks? Black folks. We play with what? Con feeling. Con feeling. With feeling. Soul. Yeah. Soul. So, yeah. you know, for me, it was always uh, Soul Train over American Bandstand. Oh, of course. And uh, KSOL. <laughs> I remember I, on my peachy phone, I'm first generation Salvadorian American, so <laughs> I used to put, I, I love, know this story. <laughs> I love soil music. So the, one of the homies like started laughing, he's like, what is this? He goes, I like KSOL, bro. And he goes, and he like, he chuckled, we laughed. And he fixed my, my, you know, I put KSOL, but I put KSOL. So he fixed my shit, and, he, and then he was like, you all right, man. Because the accent? <laughs> yeah. So I just. I never heard that story. I, I love black music, man. That's, yeah. I love black music. It was weird, because Pops, I think I was like, you know, I guess at that age, I'd have been kind of weird at, as a fifth grader, and I'm listening to Stanley Turnteen and, and, and dope, Grover actually. Washington Jr. And stuff like that. And I would, you know, I really was into uh, a lot of jazz, and that's because that's what my dad was listening to. You know, come home and put it on the headphones. I used to see him do it, so I would mimic that. I'd come home, and I'd put on my headphones. You know, we would I just listen to a lot of jazz. And I, you know, I, I don't know. It, to, to me, it seemed normal. You know, but to other people, they were like, "You listen? You're like in fifth grade. You're listening to jazz?" And I was like, "Yeah, this is this high." Yeah, your exactly. palate was you like, know? Man. yeah. So that Speaking. and that's what opened up my palate. That's why I can listen okay. to. I don't think there's any music I don't like. Right. You know, I can listen to country. Yeah. You know, Tim McGraw is my guy. Yeah. Tim McGraw is my guy. You know, and I can listen to rock. You know, I got Metallica, Aerosmith, oh, ACDC yeah. in my collection. Right. You know, I, and there's it's, it's like full on. You know, I can listen to anything. It's, you know, this is, like they say, there's only two types of music: good and bad. Good and, bad. Good and, and I'm gonna build on what they were talking about how they were introduced to soul music. Me, I'm the opposite how I got introduced to a lot of Latino music. Uh, living in Oakland, you know, you, you know, not too far from Fruitville, that's when I first heard uh, salsa music. I remember me and I uh, went in there and they were playing salsa, and then it was dope. You know, it's like, and you see like in the movies and you see them dancing. Oh, this is dope. And then when I moved to Newark, I like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? When we moved to Newark, uh, <laughs> I heard a lot. I heard a lot of it, and and, and that's when I learned the salsa. What exactly are you doing, Reese? I'm sorry, Renee. What exactly oh, no, are okay. you doing, Reese? I'm doing the mating dance for Norma Jean. <laughs> oh, there you go. Sexy oh, time. Dance. Sexy time. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> he, he trying not. He trying not to have you pack all his stuff like he, like you said you are gonna do this earlier. Ain't, this ain't <laughs> slow jam Sundays. This is a conversation <laughs> with a DJ. <laughs> And then, hey, uh, Eddie, I think Eddie, Eddie, Eddie got something right behind uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the what, 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 what you got there, Eddie? I see oh, some meats. That, that aroma hit me Good like right Lord. Here. Yeah. Good Lord. Malachi Come on, brother. What you got? Let me, oh, let me get y'all a better view of this. Oh, my God. You're, you're in that camera, too. Yeah. Cool. Go into that camera. Yeah, that, that was the closest one they could see. See, what we have here is we have a chorizo con, uh, chorizo con papas, a little bit of cotija cheese. We had some grilled asparagus finished off with some uh, grilled lemons. And then mm -hmm. right here we had a tomahawk finished off with a charcoal Tip Hawaiian salt. Tip. And some compound butter with garlic and herbs as well. Show! Show the meats, Norma. Yeah, I mean, that's number one beautiful, fan, bro. That's a beautiful presentation. Did you guys see that? Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Thank you. What brand is those tomahawks? Oh, those ones are sumacas. They're okay. actually... Uh, from Mexico, actually, they really? actually, yeah. Oh, nice. So they have a whole different grading system there. When you guys taste it, you're gonna be like, all right, all right. Um, you're gonna be really impressed with this one. Right here. And I got some steak sauce on the side that demi glazed with some of the 808 beets wine Ooh. that I put on there too. So I put that all up, hook you all up. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. Mal, um, I know this is your favorite. Uh, I. I You've expressed how much you like this and love it. 
Fast and Furious is coming out. What you think? Oh. <laughs> and the show War is King over. Mike, you need to ruin his dinner. You, you don't like? You don't like Fast and Furious, man? I don't do Fast and Furious. Okay. Fast and Furious. What about what about you, uh, Arnell? You in the? Uh, I don't bother me. My, my 13 year old, uh, um, excuse me, he's 15. My 15 year old loves it. <laughs> as, as, sangria. As ridiculous as that yeah, movies are, I watch every one of them. Man, because I, I, I got to it. take him to the movies. It is what it is. Chef Eddie, do you like uh, uh, Fast and the Furious? You gotta live life according to my other time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's a fool, I man. Chef Eddie, so let fool. this man have his own reality <laughs> series. <laughs> I hate these people. Why you hating us, man? You can't just, we, we it's, all it's, still get I mean, along. It's just, uh, they're just utterly ridiculous, and it's, I, 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 I treat them for what they are. You know, it, it is, is what it is. is. It's ridiculous. It sounds amazing it. in the surround sound. It looks cool the way they. They got good yeah. music on it sometimes, man. Right? Don't they? Yeah. No, is the soundtracks any good? Let, hey. Let me ask you guys this. Favorite soundtracks? Ooh. Oh, he is my favorite soundtrack. You gotta like, take it to the 70s. I mean, come on, Shaft, Superfly. I, yeah, I was wondering if you can go there. Uh, you know, it's funny because in the early 70s, the soundtracks were pretty much a part of the whole package deal. You know, you, you, you had, you know, like Shaft, Isaac Hayes, and they did these great songs, Curtis Mayfield on Superfly. Yeah, I love the Max. J James Brown with Black Caesar. I yeah, mean, come on. and then that faded, and then it came back right around the 90s with New Jack City and and, and that. They, the hood, yeah, and they started, I you know, because New Jack City soundtrack is I like ridiculous. the Boys in the Hood because that was Stanley Clark, right? Yeah. He, yeah, he, did, he did a lot of the score stuff. Right. He, didn't, he did a couple of songs. He didn't do uh, a lot of the songs on the thing. He did that, that Black on Black Violence, which is probably one of the eeriest songs. And throw songs. Love Jones in there as well. Love Jones classic Yeah, Love soundtrack. Jones, that soundtrack well, was ridiculous. A, I mean, there were so soul, many man. good um, soundtracks during that seven, during the during the 90s. You know, and it kind of came backwards. A lot of times, the soundtracks were better than the movies. Because who was that one? I think Death Row did one, and then the movie was probably booty. Oh, but above the, the rim? No, it wasn't above the rim. Hey, it hold on. The one. The chef is, he's, he's, uh, what are you, what are you doing to the meat, man? I'm massaging it with a little bit of butter, right? Oh, man. Look at it, it's already starting to melt. Come on, man. Butter. butter I'm at the job the lake in the morning, though. Yeah. Maybe so. As we were saying, the 70s soundtrack. So which, which ones are you? Like you were saying, Shaft, uh, Superfly, Let's Do It Again. What are some of you guys' favorite soundtracks, just in general? For the 70s, for me, it was the Mac. For who? I'm sorry. The Mac. The Mac. Mm -hmm. okay. No, exactly. Willie Hutch. Yeah, Willie uh -huh. Hutch. Willie Hutch. Huh. And then uh, for the 80s, I'm going to probably go... I, I don't know, for some reason, I like that Less Than Zero soundtrack. I know you got to remember that. That, that was, was a classic. good one. The movie yeah. with, uh, uh, yeah. uh, what's the, uh, uh Iron Man? James Spader, Robert Downey, yeah, uh, <laughs> Jamie Gertz. Yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah. I like that soundtrack, and I like the Beach Street soundtrack. I, I, I still love, uh, Both volumes. Uh, Pretty in Pink, uh, soundtrack. For the new way Wednesdays, or even like a sixteen candles. I mean, yeah. Yeah, sixteen candles was a great one. Um, I do want to say something, man. Uh, Wednesday after our show, we're listening to you, and <laughs> I love you, brother. But you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> I was telling Tango, dude. I know eighties and I know new way, but you you went to some other like I never. I'm like I, I go to, today. <laughs> Mal Malachi Maliachi is a freaking weirdo. <laughs> I don't know where you but found that, these tracks, but you had to be like a you, like he knows his shit. Seriously, yeah, it's crazy because I don't know those records. Hell of stuff I never heard. <laughs> no, because honestly, and and it's a whole big kind of crazy here. We'll, 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 I'll try to make the story short. So once the whole Twitch thing, or once the whole kind of pandemic thing hit, we're obviously DJing on Twitch. We're DJing on Instagram, we're DJing on Facebook. Um, my man Will Cage, shout out to Will Cage, brother Will Cage, reaches brother. out to me. Now, mind you, Will Cage grew up in the Fillmore and is like 6'4 and a brother. And he reaches out to me, he's like, hey, you should do a New Wave night. And I'm like, okay. And honestly, I've never really played New Wave out, maybe at a wedding or, you know, right. once or twice. But I know the music, but, you know, I never really get to necessarily play it out. And I was like, okay, let me... Give it a shot. And it's taken off into this whole thing on the Wednesdays where it's like New Wave Wednesdays. And people love it. I mean, people awesome. like, you know, 
even before I start my show, like, you know, earlier in the day, people are like, hey, we're doing Midway Wednesdays, right? I get these little texts, I get these little instant messages and, and what have you, and it's turned into this whole thing. And it's funny because, you know, I made a little emote, a little e emoji of Will. The, uh, yes. it's, a it's a brother with a little new wave, a little Devo, Devo hat yeah. on. And so, and, and it's funny because wow. a, lot of the, a lot of the folks who tune in are folks of color. I mean, Latino, right. black, and you know, they grew up the same time we grew up. Yeah. They have the same, they have the similar taste. Like, yep. you know, they grew up on like, oh, they know that. And it, a lot of it has to do with MTV because exactly uh, there wasn't the black artists on MTV initially. Right. You'd see, you know, you'd see The Cure, you'd right. see whatever David Bowie right. and, and Bowie spoke on right. too like right. you know you guys need to play more black artists right. and whatnot and so like even though you know even though we were bumping the two shorts right. we were bumping the David Bowie's as well we were bumping the Cure we were bumping the Smiths whatever it's pretty politic yeah pretty that's politic. what it's like yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. ask Taylor the same thing I'm like do they play this at black clubs because I'll be hearing it yeah. humming it's pretty politic yeah and yes. I was like what yes. <laughs> No, and, was that, and, uh, and uh, emergency, urgent, urgent, urgent. Yeah, for about yeah. four corners. Yeah, they played no, that at Star Games. There, there's certain songs I play on, during that night, and I've expressed this during the, the streams and whatnot. <laughs> we would make tapes, you know, cassette tapes for, like, D-boys, drug dealers. And some of the songs they wanted, uh, what's the, the police song? Um, oh, man, I... I, I I play it like every other week now. Um, when oh, the man. look of yeah, 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 yeah. running down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that. Yeah, song, yeah, man. because the, the drums on that were just so hard. There were certain songs. Oh, I love that. They, yeah. were, they, wanted, they wanted on their tapes. And, be, you know, even though we, even though at the time we kind of tripped, we'd be like, you really? You want that on your tape? Yeah. You know, that was... Yeah. You know, we listened to everything from A to yeah. Z. Yeah, we did. That's what's amazing about Phil Collins. That's what's so amazing yeah. about your show on Wednesdays, man. Hey, uh, Chef, uh, we gotta get say with you what you're learning. What uh, how you guys liking the uh, 80 beat, 808 beats? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you guys liking that? Oh man, I'm trying to just stick to the ground. Man, what you think? Man, you are you are <laughs> a connoisseur. What you think? I wouldn't call myself a, a connoisseur, oh, but yeah. no, I'm not. I I am really not mad. It's a nice it's a nice red wine. Okay. I mean, you can't go wrong. And I mean, come on, 808 beats? <laughs> that's yeah. That's it. Um, uh, Eddie, and, oh, you, and, and I was going to say, can we can we speak on, like, the whole history of it? I was going to tell you yeah. the concept. Eddie, do you, can you speak on the concept? Or? I wish I could. Uh, what does it say on the bottle? Uh, does it have, a, have it on the story on the bottle? I'm sorry. Uh, what's your boy's name? I'm you sorry. Can read, Mario. I can't read. Mario? Yeah, so what Mario, his whole focus is on this, he's like, he grew up up Redwood City, listening to like Chewy and stuff like that, and loves loves freestyle, right? Right. Oh, freestyle. Yeah. So his whole thing is like he tries to always bring on like you know all the old school freestyle um, artists right. and promote their stuff and talk to them, and he's right. just all about that movement. Right. So he's like, I gotta go 808 beats, right? right? So the whole like I couldn't tell you like what vineyard or whatnot, but no, yeah. I can tell you, and that's how he kind of came up yeah. with it. Right. Really, really, really cool guy. So we ever get a chance to like talk to right. him. And this is going to go good, really well with, with oh, the steak. Oh, what's going on? That steak right? And what, 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 what do you got going with the, with the, what do we got again? Uh, a couple people wondering what all we got. What was on the menu? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, you um. Know the butter specifically? Yeah, somebody wanted to know what type of butter you were using. I told him it's parquet. It's parquet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on it. Look Not at me. <laughs> you got to keep it hood now. Come on now. But uh, what's on the uh, menu, uh, brother? So, once again, we have uh, chorizo con papas, a little bit of cotija chorizo cheese. Chorizo con papas. We have a uh, grilled asparagus. We finish off with a little bit of grilled lemon and some Parmesan cheese. Sure. Y'all can see I like cheese and butter, right? Yes. That makes it better. Then we have our grilled tomahawks here, right? We got some more on the rare, some mid rare, and we got some medium right there too. And I finished it off with that compound butter. It's got rosemary, thyme, garlic, and I use unsalted European butter. Um, I always go unsalted because you know what? You can balance off the salt a little bit better. Eddie, do you and you 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 do catering all over, right? What, oh, yeah. what's, I'm sorry. What's, tell me the name of your company. Oh, so the company that I actually uh, started is actually Aguevo Creations. Aguevo in Spanish is kind of like saying like hell yeah, you know what I mean? So I kind of you know took it to the streets and you know made it open to everybody. So I give a chance to have everybody try the food. We're not like some of y'all been to my pop-ups, like a sushi roll. It's 14 bucks, but it's like Delicious. it's huge. You know what I mean? Yeah. That 
burgers, you know, sushi, vegan, everything. The so vegan bro, everything. That really surprised me, man. Oh, thank you. Really and we make all our own masa. We're all scratch. We don't like to go around and buy and bottle stuff. We go, you know, number love for you. Yeah, I want to apologize to our audience. We're getting a little windy out here, so that's what you hear in the mic. So I'm trying to control it as best as I can. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, you need to control this wind. Man. Bottle of the wine to the oh, camera, yeah, so I'll if you like to see it. So, so, yeah, so that's a pretty nice one. Can we explain to people what 808 is? Okay, so uh, the 808 uh, uh, beats a wine, the, the owner, the creator. Mm -hmm. It's the term 808. What the, is 808? Oh, 808 is a, the a, drum machine. Exactly. It's from not a Roland. Zinco. Roland. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. DR 808. Do you know that, that kick drum, the boom that you hear on, on all the Miami bass music? That's where it comes from. Also, Planet Rock, right, was, was programmed on an 808. So a lot of the early freestyle records were done with that drum machine. It's, it's a it, yeah. A Everybody of, loves Dre, that. Dre used that a lot in his early production, didn't right. he? But Mantronic definitely. And for the dessert, it's not Eddie. It's Look at these. And for the dessert, it's about five eight, two hundred eighty pounds. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh. Extra sweet. Extra sassy. Look at that. 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 Look uh -huh. At the when he was he was cooking, and I said, you know, he gave me the the steak, and I was like, man, this is really tender. And he goes, yeah, that's that's what they call me, little tender. And I was like, <laughs> and I, I had to hit him with it. I said, Eddie, I ain't calling another grown man little tender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what's not gonna to happen. But y'all look at me in person. I'm a tender, right? <laughs> tender, right? Tender, <laughs> tender bender. Ladies, can you explain to the audience? So. Uh, the one that actually been helping me out a lot through this whole thing too has actually been uh, I always collab with her. She uh, worked with me at the uh, previous job as well. It's V Sweet Treats. Is that the young lady behind you? Yeah. I call her little tender. V's awesome. She uh, she's one of the. Hey, we call her little tender. Right? Yeah, we call her little tender. <laughs> Damn, Damn, bro. I call... <laughs> just kidding, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so um. I gotta say one thing is that I used to hate cheesecake. I did not like it. Same. I hate guava cheesecake. <laughs> and this young lady right here, she changed my mind. Uh, you know what she put there? You go. Uh, so you, you want to explain what you got right here? All right. So I have a mango cheesecake that I did, um, dressed with some fresh mango and a little uh, puree sauce that I got on top there. And then I have my famous bourbon cheesecake. I make my own bourbon caramel. Bourbon cheesecake. Yes, no. I use Maker's Mark bourbon to wow. make my caramel. And then it's topped with a little praline. See, Malachi has bourbon for breakfast, so I think you'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in the show. Yeah. Brooklyn, you know you're not part of the show, right? I'm behind the scenes. No, you you in the scene. Show. You get you Brooklyn in the is the show. Guess <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> who's gonna be the first person to get fired? Okay, what, Anyhow, what, what's, uh, your, uh, your Instagram? How can uh, our viewers yeah. follow you? So my Instagram is V's V S uh, Sweet Treats. Uh, V's is because everyone calls me V. My name yeah. is Victoria, though. So what's your real name? <laughs> we, we, what's call your stripper it. name? Bro? <laughs> 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 brown sugar. You can look at brown sugar. Chef brown sugar still on IG. You know, I used to be at the cinema back in the day. I came back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eddie. Did we ever say what the butter was? What kind of butter was that? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a compound butter with uh, rosemary, thyme, and uh, European unsalted butter. Is that something Garlic. you, you make? Yes. Yourself? Oh, so you make that? Uh huh. Butter. Okay. That's a little tender butter, okay. That butter makes his own butter. Come on, man. You know that. Yeah. We ain't playing up in here. Mm -mm. We are not playing. Wait, did she did she give her social? You give all your social media? I'm trying to work on these microphones and cameras. Okay, yeah, okay. Hey, okay. Is there anybody that's a hiring for birthday cakes or any kind of Birthday event? events. I do custom cakes. I do mini cheesecakes, cupcakes, cookies. Do wedding cakes yeah, as well? Yeah, wedding cakes as well. What's the... Uh, What's the most outrageous request you've had for a cake? Anything weird? Uh, I had to do a bachelorette party one time. <laughs> I see where this is going. Hold on. Hold on. Where's this so going? Banana sticking straight out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? Where's this going? 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 Where's this
does not do is give you a discount. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how, so long, how long have you been baking? You? Um, I've been baking for quite a when they see their cake or even just tasting it is right. is everything for me. He's from Gilroy. He's gonna be going to Hermitage Brewery with uh, Big Daddy's Barbecue. Big Hermitage? Daddy's Barbecue '89. Woo! Hermitage Brewery. That's San Jose. That's right? in San Jose. Oh, and then V uh, will be doing. She'll be helping me out too. Now I'm about to say. So V's actually like, she's like a Swiss Army knife. She could do it all. She does a lot of my sauces. She does a lot of my uh, everything. She does uh, pastries and whatnot. And she's in the back grilling, grilling and frying and. Everything. How long have you guys been working together? Six, seven years? Oh, wow. Because yeah. you guys been like part of working at an event and then you guys started together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the first day I met her, I'm like, who the hell is this loud ass girl in my kitchen? Oh, she one. thought she was all chingona. I was like, <laughs> so he was like the executive big chef, and I had no idea who he was. And I'm just doing my thing, you know, prepping out whatever. The right. chef at the catering department needed. Right. And then I see this big old cholo dude. <laughs> <laughs> she said cholo dude. Little did you know that was Lil Tim. Little did I know. Orderly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was history. Then he started making me laugh. It was good times. And then he worked with my sister. And then when he found out that my sister was my sister, then he, then he started messing with me. Big, big for that, and couldn't stand her. Yeah. Like, Damn. Yeah, right. sh- where's that mute button at? Chef <laughs> Eddie, how can um, how can our followers and viewers follow you? What what's all your social handle? Oh, my social handle is Awebel uh, under slash food under slash creations under slash. We'll put it up there too. All right, cool. Well, she put it up. <laughs> I get mixed up with all these under slashes and other things. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, my daughters, they do all my stuff for me. Because me, I'm like, uh, can you put this up? So please, please, please remember one thing. If y'all DM me, remember my daughters. Look at all my DMs. Please be appropriate. All right. So, Chef, I think, uh, are you guys ready to eat? You guys want to taste some food? Yeah, can we watch right. Tell them to give, give them a little sample right now. And so we can, you know, how let everybody know how the food tastes. And then we go eat. Man, go taste it. I want to, I want okay, okay, okay. Take a little taste. Cut off a little slab for me. Let him taste it. Uh, Eddie. Can you give me some gloves, please? Well, that's Brooklyn. Normally, the taste. I'm going to get him. I can do it. It's all no problem. Okay. 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 So it's kind of been chilling in the wind a little bit, but. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, just excuse that real quick. So, do you ever do uh, shows in the East Bay? Oh yeah, actually, I used to do a lot of. Uh, I have a big following in the East Bay. Cause I did a lot of pop-ups out there. Mm-hmm. So, what pop-ups is kind of like? You know, you go out there, you get a ten, you pop up on your food and whatnot. Definitely. Well, that's on our Twitch, on our IG, and our Facebook. You got it, brother. Oh, okay. Jay's gonna like that one. Yeah. I like it. I know. He said he wanted it like that. So we gotta make sure we got something for everybody, right? Aren't you nice? Gotta be nice. I would have said more for us. 
Look at that right there. Though. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. Woo. I'm back. Sauce been reducing, so it's a little bit more thicker, but hey. So, yo, he about to pour this sauce up in this. Skin saucy. It's it has so that sweet. wine. With the 808 Beats wine. Hello. Man, you about to have me go home with the headache. All right, but <laughs> we finish it off with a little bit of finishing salt. Okay. Just to make sure we's all there. So explain to him again that that's salt, the, the, the black salt. Right there. So it's actually uh, charcoal salt, like from Hawaii. But I mix it with a little bit of a chili to arbol, so it's gonna have a little bit of spice on there too. Okay. We're close to Cinco de Mayo, so we gotta go in with a little bit of like. Can I get one more? I'm hell of, of course. Who's a Wow. Man, it smells amazing, guys. I wish we had, we had smell a vision because you. Oh, oh man. No, no we, I'm, about to, I'm about to eat. Right? Smells well, so good. Smells amazing. Here you go, colors. Technique, man. So when you when you got on, see, so has a little bit more what, rare what right was there. First setup, like, what, what was your first equipment? You know, you oh, it's like, uh, what are you, what are you waiting for? <laughs> my mom's turntable that I got in trouble with. So my sister was listening, Dancerella. Dancerella, that's your sister. She's on Twitch. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dancerella. Dancerella, yeah, that's my sister. That's the one who introduced me to a lot of different like new wave and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so she was into that vibe. She, well, she was like me. She was into everything, but, you know, right. all of those kinds of um, things. So nice. Oh, you were plenty in your fridge with those Wow. So Tony said she probably got some, like, Western appliances. Oh, yeah. Is it? <laughs> oh, but luckily we're having Thanks that. for telling me, brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting up here trying to turn up this mic, and I'm like, okay, it ain't going I up. I think everyone just wants to say <laughs> That's why I didn't see it. My apologies, people. Uh, yeah, and I started scratching on, on, on Mom's Luther and Freddie like Records, weeks. and that's how I got started. And then um, my neighbor downstairs, she, was get, she had bought, like, a whole new stereo. It was one of those ones with a little glass door, and so she had gave us the old she gave me the old one with the speakers and i used to scratch on that all day with my own you know like i'm not gonna scratch on my no more i'm not gonna try to scratch on all those and my mom would uh just buy us buy me like 12 inches and then um i forgot how i got another turntable and i didn't have no way of connecting it together that's my <laughs> you know you know out of the back they had the little the, the uh, inputs in you can Put it you to the back. A, you know, when you're at that age, right, you become like a little electrical engineer. Man. Huh? And then uh, that's kind of how I got started, like that's that, dope. yeah. And then, like, I eventually got, like, a, a, a realistic mixer. Mm, the, uh, the one with the crossfader or without the crossfader? It was the one with the crossfader. It was with the little small one. Oh, okay. And I suck. Four channel one. Yeah, I suck so bad. <laughs> Ooh, I suck. So what's, go what's going on? Yeah. Let's go see what this meat is about. And I put red wine inside of it from the Beats 808. Ooh. So y'all gonna see a little bit of a. Uh, okay, so. Let me see what Mal over there tearing it up. He ain't saying not a single word. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Mal yeah, went off yeah. screen. He went off screen, tearing it up. You ain't you you devoured yours already. Are you? I know. I'm over in my mouth. You got a mouthful of food, so Mal ain't got nothing left on his plate. So I'm assuming it was good. And then Dante's right here. Okay. Okay. Mal ain't got nothing on his plate. Jesus, that's good. <laughs> Mal, uh, hey, what you Mal, what's it good? Right here. Yeah, he can't talk. He can't talk. <laughs> Taste is over here. Mm. Thank so, uh, you. Uh, You're welcome. Technique, what you think? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, don't smack in the mic, bro. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got the smack on this mic. Oh, yeah. You know it's smacking. Oh, my God. It's smacking, huh? We'll cut the desserts in half. So, Hello. Like, mm -hmm. oh, y'all make sure I'm gonna hook y'all up with some salad too. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm saying. <laughs> gotta eat healthy. Yeah, you gotta make it a healthy meal. I'm about to be 47, so I can't eat like I used to. How many people we got? Like, okay. uh, ooh. oh my god. So, technique. What's what's uh what's one of the wildest things you ever have had happen at a gig? 
that's just hilarious. Or just something that's just out of the ordinary. Besides Eric Cummings. <laughs> Shout out to Eric. That's an that's inside um, joke. Wow, would it be something Motown on Mondays, maybe? No, um, TJ just um, underground party, and this guy came in with an overcoat. <laughs> and yeah, where are we he, going with this? I, I think yeah. that, I think that was I, me. He, th- I'm going that direction. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me the question. Yeah. This is the direction. We gonna get to that with Mal in the Halloween costume, but go ahead. This cat came oh, in with an overcoat, and then he just like took it off and he had on this um it was like a tiger print with like one strap hey I, it, it wasn't a tiger print i i, I don't like tiger <laughs> you wasn't there <laughs> but he came in with that and uh he did this weird move and did the splits and he just was sitting there like this and um yeah, man. Where, where is this? Town Are you in a club? Where, is oh this Motown Mondays? This is on no, no, this is way before Motown on Mondays, okay, man. Okay. Yeah. Um, and dude did the splits, and he yeah. was doing these uh, oh, moves, man. and th- it just like everything just stopped. I like turned the music down a little bit, so <laughs> and then he got up and he just was walking around with that little leotard outfit he had. Oh on. my god! That was the I'm weirdest. Not mad. Nah, I was. Okay, I was. now, Mal, go ahead and tell the story. That the one you have similar. To yeah, I'm about to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got I got too many stories, but yeah, that 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 one. Uh, Oasis in Oakland, uh, right near courthouse. Shout out to uh, my man Dave. Was it affiliated with the other Oasis? No, no, okay. no, no. Different different spot. Okay, go ahead. Um, so. We're doing a Halloween party, and I like to, you know, I like I enjoy Halloween as, you know, as, 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 much, as, the as much as the next man. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I gotta come up with a little outfit. I'm like, let me think of something. Um, I kind of wait till the last minute, mm-hmm. and I'm feeling kind of, you know, I'm, if you know me, I'm, I'm 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 cool with my body. It is what it is, and if you don't like it, whatever. I don't, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really give a damn. Um, I decide I'm going to be a flasher because, you know, growing up in the 70s, streakers, flashers, that was kind of a thing. And like in my head and like me and me and my man, Rick Bond is on what Twitch. What kind of thing was that? No, it's just, no, it's just, we, it, was, it was always funny to me. It was always like, oh man, look at the dude streaking. Like, I don't know, to me it was always funny. And I was like, man, nobody would ever think of being a flasher. So I'm like, okay, let me, I got a trench coat. You know, I got some sneakers. What am I going to wear underneath my trench coat? And so I'm thinking, let me find something I could, you know, wear down there or, you know. So, and it's kind of last minute. So I'm like, there's like a little adult bookstore around the corner from the crib. Still there. (laughs) Shout out to Secrets. I know Um, which one you're talking about. So I'm like, yeah, let me roll up there and see what they have. I roll up there. They have nothing for men. They have everything for women. So I'm like, man, what what am I gonna wear? And so, where is he going with this? Oh yeah, no, it, it, it gets better. Um, so I ended up buying this kind of women's kind of thing below, <laughs> and <then laughs> because th- I mean I didn't really have an option. I'm like, you know, I guess I could have wore some tidy whities or some boxers, nope. some you know, but I was like, that's eh, no fun. Like, some some <laughs> underoos. <laughs> And so I get back to the house, and I'm like, all right, let me, let me try this little thing below. And I'm like, oh, man, this, this doesn't fit like I was hoping it would fit. Like, basically, my guys are just all over the place. They're just, you know, my, the, w- the little thing below wasn't really working. Like, my guys are just flopping yeah, everywhere. Okay. Hello. But you know what? I don't give a damn. It's Halloween. Yeah. I roll to the club with my little overcoat and my little You're DJing, thing right? thingy. Yeah, I'm DJing, yeah. And, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. Some, some people got flashed that night, you know, if you were lucky. Right. And I, I kept it quick and, like, kind of moving and, you know, what have you. But I'll, I'll, never, I'll never forget at the end of the night, though, um, one of the owners, Fish, rest in peace, saw me and as, as I'm packing up. And he looks at me 
And he gives me like the look of disgust and just like shakes his head like. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, it's Halloween. Come on, fish. And he just looks. He doesn't say a word. Just shakes his head and looks at me like, you know, with this face of disgust. You shattered his image yeah, of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my guys were just all over the place that night. There's actually a picture on my Instagram of it. But it's kind of, we have a, <laughs> it's kind of pixelized down below. So you don't really get the full Monty, but, you know, the full Mally. But, uh, yeah. Just that, when I thought I knew this story. man. I told you he's a fucking weirdo, bro. <laughs> you ain't lying, man. <laughs> Come on. You only live once, man. I mean, but I'm not going to live like that. But you no. know what? I'm glad you did that, though. And I'm glad you told me this story. No, I'm glad I'm sharing with everyone. And I will never hang out with you on Halloween. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> do you guys do you guys have any... Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, you know. Do you guys have any uh, DJ stalkers or groupies? I, I don't. Ch- Chewie said he had a couple of this one girl was always stalking him. I don't. Stalkers? Or just nah. groupies? Uh. I mean, <laughs> I mean... I think we've all had groupies at one point. I'll just leave it at that. We yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. Man, now you've yeah. been out. You've been yeah. out on tour, on on tour with with, with uh, people. So you. Yeah, I'm kind of well rounded in this whole industry because besides being a DJ, I actually was part of the whole kind of manufacturing of CDs and 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 then I was you know worked for a very famous label at the time, ABB Records. Remember, li- uh, I think a little brother, Dilated Peoples. Mm-hmm. Um, Jafari, I mean, just, you know, we, we, had, we, we had some heavy hitters, especially during, like, the, the kind of independent hip-hop days. You know, think of uh, Stone's Throw, you know, uh, raucous labels of that ilk. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I've kind of, yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been on tour, I've been around, and, you know, I got some short, I got some stories. You opened sure. up one time in San Jose for the Fugees, right? Yeah, we opened up for that's the Fugees. Where, yeah. I, that's where yeah. I, 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 well, I didn't get to meet him, but that's where I first heard of Malachi. Mm-hmm. And that's like, what, 90... That was a beehive, right? 94, yeah, no, yeah. Probably like 94, yeah. 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 That was at the Beehive, right? At the Beehive. Which, exactly yep, the what Beehive. The Beehive was at Ajax. At Acid oh, Ajax. Jazz. That's right, Ajax. That That's I remember. Right. It was remember. an Acid Jazz club. I remember. He was nice, bro. Yeah, who shouts out to my, for for that day? my man Clever Jeff, who was Clever on. Clever Jeff. Clever Jeff. Quest you Records. Were DJ. Yeah, Quincy Jones's label. Um, Yeah, we were, we were labeled. Oh, yeah, we were labeled. We were label mates with Sophia. Um, who else was on the way? Shout to my time. boy Reggie. Um, Severe, I mean, not Severe, um Jeff just did something with Kev Choice, didn't he? Didn't they do a project together or no? Am no, I no, 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 no. <laughs> Jeff still puts out music independently and whatnot on his oh. own. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we, you know, we, we toured with a, you know, with a, with a bunch of folks at the time and did shows, spot shows around, you know, around the United States. So it, it was, it was fun times. It was definitely like a learning period for me, you know, but uh yeah, it was, it was, hey, don't yeah. ask you guys, what you guys think about the, the food? Come on, man. Yeah, oh, come on. Just a, just a little bit we had, right? Come on, so Chef look, Eddie is the bomb. I'm going to tell you that. V that is the bomb. The salad the, the salad was very, it was like a he, burst. The bushes just was good bushes. Well, I see what he was talking about when he was saying that the, 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 the right, exactly. I saw that, and then, like, the fruit kind of just, like, it toned it down. It, it, it just, like, it, it was like a burst of flavor in the mm-hmm. mouth, so that was cool. Sort of like Starburst. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like some Starburst. A little better, though. Now, Matt, I've just seen you post it. Since you're out on tour, you post a picture of you and uh, Matt and uh, Red Man. What was that about? <laughs> they look like they were See, he's got better stories. I'm, I told you, bud. I told you I'm born. <laughs> it, 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 that was at a, like a meet and greet when Here? I think they put their first, yeah, in San Francisco. Uh, what was Oh, Uno's. Remember the Pizzeria Uno's? Yes, yes. It was a chain. And they had, you know, they had like a like a whole kind of meet and greet things when they had meet and greets. Basically, when an artist would put out a label, uh, well, art, a label would put out an artist album, they would bring them to cities, and you know, they wanted to, them to meet with the DJs, the influencers of the of that city. And I was considered one. So yeah, no, I got a chance to meet them on meet them early on and whatnot, and was that you know, the, uh, the the month of the man. Uh, promo that Def Jam did? It was. Method Man. That was the first. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. 
remember that. Okay. And they, yeah, they, 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 they like something about my head. <laughs> I see. They like they were having, they were having a good time. Yeah, they got, they got a kick out of looking at my head. So the circumference <laughs> of your dome. Exactly. <laughs> I have an, I have an interesting dome. Oh man, that's what we were just talking about the food, the, the, the flavor. That dessert. Right? Hey, Sorry. and you know me, I love colors and, and presentation, and this this is beautiful. It's, it's, wait, do you taste it? It's, oh my goodness! Oh, I'm about to taste it right now. I believe in cheesecake now, V. If, if Shout it, out to V. If it wasn't, if, 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 it. if it wasn't cold outside, I'd get naked eating this. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Between, between you and Malachi, man, I, I thought I knew y'all too. Team no shirt, team no shirt. You ain't never yeah. ate dessert yeah. naked. Yeah. You ain't never yeah. ate no Ben and Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, real talk. Night, yeah, real talk. Technique, you ain't never we'll ate Ben and Jerry's butt naked? Nah, bro. I ain't going to eat nothing that says butt in it, bro. What's on my head? Man, we're so spoiled, man. I want to thank Chef Eddie yes. and Beef. Thank hey, you so way. much. Beats for the wine. I don't drink wine, but my guy said it's yeah. good. It's always good. Beats, man. Um, Pretty sure he's our he's our wine sponsor, right? <laughs> yeah. So he'll you know be around. So he'll this be is our first show, while. so you know uh, we're we're just cleaning it. You know, this is our first one, guys. So thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. I yeah, really this appreciate is, it. This is uh, you know, we, we got we we got hit bumps and bumps here while we trying to work out the kinks. But this, no, for sure. This is when people get the idea. And of course, we had to do the first show with our brothers, the Black Latinos. Black Latinos. Yes. So for those who don't know, these are who I yell out yes. on Fridays, <laughs> on Saturdays, and Sundays. Every day. I yell out Black Latinos. This is uh, this is us. We are the we and are the collective. Yeah. Once uh, Rona take his ass up out of here, we gonna get together. We gonna do a nice little soul R&B oh party. Mm -hmm. We just gonna just kick back and chill. We even gonna get Mr. Tay on the table. I might have to do that. You know, I, can, I can press a few buttons. I've been I, I've been trying to get Tay on these tables for the longest, bro. Yeah, I, I, you know, I want to ask you guys because yeah. please when do you, please. when uh, when I see both of you guys work together at uh, Motown and Mondays in Oakland, I I, I like to know how did you guys meet? How how did this partnership <laughs> form? So you had to have known him before Motown for him to just show up. So yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah we, you we, guys are like a, you know you guys gel well. We were actually doing an after hours party in Oakland. Okay. Like literally probably like two or three hundred feet from. Motown on Mondays, where we do really? Motown on Mondays. Hello, stranger. Yeah, there's like a little, there's like a little bodega that's kind of catty corner to the club, which is like across street from my house, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and it was an old record shop back in the day, but really they weren't, they were barely open. All right. But you went behind the counter down below. Mm -hmm. It was an after hour spot. Okay. And yeah, it was wild. I mean, it was you know what it. What, Everything you know, like and, it was and honest, and, and honestly, like the more we thought about it and to think about it, even these days, it was like, it was a death trap, honestly. One way in, one way out. I remember my man Stretch. I'm telling shout Kurt. out to my man Cheeto. He <laughs> leaned, he <laughs> leaned, he, he leaned upon this kind of we thought was a column, and the column kind of gave way. Really? But that's real. It was one of those things, you know. You're kind of young, and you think you're inv invincible. But oh, we had we had we had great times there. How but yeah, you? so oh god, How I don't know. What was this? This was like I was late in my late twenties. Yeah, because I was in my late twenties. So this was yeah, about it was like years ago, huh? It was. Yep. Cause, yeah, like late nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I you know he was on the lineup when I was like, who's this guy? No. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I said the up. same thing too, because I, I I said that to uh, to, to Stretchito, man. I said. Who's that dude? He said, oh, that's Malachi. He's like a machine. I was like, and I just sat there like, this dude is raw. Now, my other question, did he have hair? No. No, he no. didn't have no hair. You were always bald, bro? It had left you a long time ago, huh? I, I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> About like 92, maybe. You know, that whole kind of Cypress Hill, House of Pain. Right. Like, like, hey. Onyx. Let me, let me, I was like, let me cut my hair, and <laughs> yeah, I've never, yeah, it's never, I never had it back, honestly. So, so this partnership is, you guys been together, what, 10 years? Well, no, we didn't really hook up at that, that night, because I didn't see him for a long time, so that was through Baldy. And, um, 
like later on, I think we started hanging out when uh, we would always see each other, you know, because we had the same circle. And then uh, I think what <laughs> Love Love Radio was when I started coming around. Yeah, I do a show called Love Love Radio every Wednesday on uh, ADP.FM. Still through this day. And he showed up one day. He was like, hey, do you mind if I come by the show? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And basically, he never left. I couldn't, you know, like next week, the, the following week, he shows up. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't really ask him to come, but he's here. Yeah. But I, hey, you, put, you put it to work? Bro, I hella invited you know. myself. <laughs> so he's he going to get used to me. I'm, I, he going to get involved with me. <laughs> he, was, he was the yin to my yang. I mean, yeah. And, and from that day, I learned so much. I've, I've been learning. I, through this day, learned from Malachi. Man. Yeah, you know what I was going to say? With Mal, man, uh, um, and I'm a big fan of, of Mal, and I'm a big fan of the DJ culture. So when you see somebody like Mal's caliber, the way he plays, you know, the freedom that he has, you know, it's like that's what I strive for. You know, it's like uh, same with CJ Flash and you know, yeah, the way they play, you know what I mean, with so much conviction, but it's also so – you know, because they take chances. It, I don't know, you know, like that's, that's that's the way I interpret when I watch you guys play. Um, that 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 term, right? Don't judge a book by its cover. I'm, I'm like I'm so blown away by the Wednesday um, new wave show, man. It's amazing to me, and I love how you share these stories about these fucking D boys from Oakland wanting to hear police on a mix tape. It's it's beyond my because you know you would think no, nah, they want to hear just rap and shit, but it's not like that. You know, and it's so dope here. What you, the music that you know. Yeah, no, there were certain records like Shock the Monkey, Peter Gabriel, Lena Lovich, New Toy. Um, yeah, wow. dude, those are records we would play alongside, like Too Short. That's crazy. And you know, that's that's the thing. I mean, growing up when we grew up, you had to play it all. Right. Like, I mean, that was Versa. you know that was the basis of an Oakland house party. Wow. And also, you know, you never knew whether you were getting your stuff stolen from you or getting. <laughs> getting your ass whooped, you that's know that real. was that was the chances of you, you know, cut. You know that's how that's the way we cut our teeth as DJs, especially growing up in Oakland. You never knew what you were gonna, gonna get, get yourself into, and but, what you gonna you know, get paid if they gonna pay you. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, hope you know, hopefully you, but you never knew, like you know, especially different turfs, like whether DJ in North Oakland or East Oakland or West Oakland. It's you know. You, you never know what you're getting you're getting yourself into, but right. at the same time, I mean that's that's the basis so you, of that. My foundation is being a DJ. That's dope. You know? So you, you so you were like you're like a mobile DJ, like carrying the, the equipment, the records. So you know how to set up and do gain structure and all that. You know, setting up EQs in the room. Well, and, that's you know, a, yeah. Right? Well, that, well, that's a, and and that's the thing too. I mean, you kind of learn that as you go along. I right. mean, you like I said, cutting your teeth. You would be DJing in one part of the house but the party is in the other part of the house right. so you're in like the coat room djing yeah and then you'd kind of hear noise like if people you know were vibing and right. you hear people kind of yell or you know scream and then you're like okay i must be doing all right then right. you know even though you can't see them you could kind of hear them faintly right. you know that was you know <laughs> part of you know our whole upbringing and, and right. how you learned as a dj so Man, you know, one of your parties uh, that you guys do, the, um, the Motown Monday, man, it's it's an awesome um, party, bro. It's just a kick-ass party. How'd you, get, how'd you get that gig? How'd you land that? Um, well, first of all, shouts out to Don Gordo. We just celebrated 12 years of, man. Wow. Incredible. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this past Monday night. But I first heard about the party, and then I kind of knew about it, and then... I saw that they were bringing an Oakland chapter, and I was like, just as a fan, as a DJ, I made it a point. I was like, I need to go support that party every week. That's dope. Because that soul music, that's what, it, you know, I grew up on it and what have you. So right. that was really important to me. Like, as a fan, I have to support them. Right. And it started out on a real high, but then hit a low to the point where they almost stopped it. Like, because people, you know, weren't coming out and they weren't getting the numbers that they expected. Um, and they it rose back up. And my man, DJ Crimson, shouts out to Crimson. Uh, Crimmy. It was his birthday as well uh, this yep, past sure week. Was. As Happy well birthday. as Don Gordo. Happy <laughs> birthday, Crimmy. But he was going to grad school. And because, like, I was, I had DJed the party a couple times and very much supported the party and, and what have you. And, you and know, platter, just, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, you are Mr. Oakland, too. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I Crimson. I think it's such a perfect fit. But so Crimson was going to grad school, and he reached out to me. He was like, hey, I need you to take over perfect. this party because, you know, I know what you bring to the table. And, and, and a lot of it was just unspoken. It was just between me and him. He knew, first of all, that party being in Oakland, it, 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 it means so much to me. And yes. the, the, de the demographic of the party. I mean, I you know, it was very important for me to bring black DJs in because it is black music. Yes, absolutely. And it was very important to me to have black folks show up at my party. Yes. For a Motown party. Right. Because, this, you know, our city is being, you know, kind of gentrified in a lot of ways. <laughs> I didn't want it to turn into something that, you know, that wasn't authentic and genuine. I wanted right. it to be Oakland, and I think we've done a great yeah, job with that. Absolutely. Um, and keeping it that way. Right. And I love, you know, I mean, we have we have a lady that showed up who was 83 years old at our party for like a month straight. That's like beautiful. Just, you know, I, we love to see our elders. It makes right. my heart just, you know, like, oh, man, I can't. I can't even express what the party means to me. It's just, it's, you know, it's it's such a, a labor of love. You know, yeah, elders, I, I love, I always make it a point, I was like, oh, I, I want to go talk to my elders, make sure they're cool, make sure they're comfortable, and they, you know, they rock out with the youngsters. And especially, it's all about the music and, and the stories that, you know, people have come up to me after our, you know after our nights and they've like literally cried like i've never had so much fun in one night like right. oh my god like this That's is like geez. this is it's 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 spiritual for folks right. it's church for some folks right. for real. during this whole pandemic thing people like especially the past few months every week i get two or three people hit me and like hey are you guys gonna open back up when are you gonna open back up people are so it, you know we've ingrained ourselves in that community right. and 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 I mean, it's it, it's hard to put into words. I mean, it's you know, it's it's very emotional for me. Right. It's you know, it's beautiful. Uh, I, as a, as someone that got a chance to play there, man. It, oh I, yeah, I remember I, that night, brother. <laughs> I enjoyed the vibe, man. That's what really took me, and the and the openness and the willingness of of, of the audience to go on a musical journey. Because we, were, you know, I didn't, I'm not a really really good at Motown music but I'm really well at other uh, genres and we were able to play that and they were loving it and then it got to a point where they were ready to hear more Motown and then here came uh, the other DJ I forgot who played right after me and uh, but you're like your opening set so I understand it and when you go up those stairs and you're in that room upstairs you feel the love, man, that the people have for the music, you know? Yeah, the energy. And that's dope that you guys created that. And then this guy emceeing, it's just uh, It's a whole nother level. Yeah, it, it, seriously. It ain't that, easy, hey, trust me. On the oh. Monday. No. Let me, let me let, yeah, let, 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 let me speak on that. It's um, beautiful. Thanks, you know, uh, yeah, no, kudos. No, seriously. There's only one host at a Motown on Monday's party around the world. And how many are and there? And how many there are? There's at least 20 plus Motown on Mondays world. parties each and every Monday night. Um, you know, cities as far as, you know, like Brazil um, or not cities. Philippines, too. Uh, Philippines, yeah. No, exactly. But there's only one host at our parties. And that's when that's this young man technique. right here. He makes you feel special. He, he makes it. it he, he, you know, he's, you know, he, yeah, I mean, he, yeah. he makes everyone feel like a VIP. You know, put the mic in my hand and said, "Go up there." I was like, "Man, I don't know how to do this." <laughs> but you, but you did good though. I tried. Man. You know, they wasn't. They was looking at me like, "Who is this skinny dude? This ain't the skinny dude we like." <laughs> he's such a he's such a unique factor to yes, what we are. I mean, it's, so. it's it's he's it's, he's part of Motown on Mondays. He's I mean, he's, it isn't the same without him. Lollipops. Hey, yeah. we got to get a lollipops because they need that sugar brush. You, you know. know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an amazing party, man. Yes, it I, is. I, I just can't wait for all this to come back. Oh I mean, man. Uh, you know, let's talk about the pandemic. I mean, as as, as DJs, because we do this for a living. It's not just something that we do yeah, because it's it's, uh, it's 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 in style. This is a this we make a living off of this. And yeah. it's, it's, it's something you know, you guys love to do, or DJs in general right. love to do, and all of a sudden it's taken away from you. How'd you adjust to that? To that whole sudden stop? Right? <laughs> Did you have any nights well, for DJ before the pandemic? It, it, 
maybe once, tw- well, maybe like twice a week, yeah, maybe. Once or twice. Depends. Right. Um, no, it, it was tough. That's why initially, you know, we went to Facebook and Instagram. I was like, and for me, I was like, right. I want to DJ. I, you know, I have to DJ. That's right. that's what I do. That's right. you know, I, I enjoy. I I really enjoy sharing music with people. So you know, once I saw like a D Nice, maybe about two or three nights after he started, I was like, I I think I could do this. Like you know, yeah, just put my phone up and just that. put it next to the speaker, and then I'll just play music. But then I also saw that like, oh, this is a little bit different from playing inside a club. You need to engage with folks because the yeah. folks are at their house they're alone you know i was at my house alone so i mean i need you know i needed people you know engaging with me as much as they needed me engaging with them as you know it's a two-way street so you know you just kind of learned on the fly and it was like i said you know even though this response isn't like simultaneous it's i mean it's still amazing right it's still just you know i can't you know it's it's you know it's different in a lot of ways but at the same time the love is you know the love is there i mean people you know instant message me text me like oh man you've gotten beat through some tough times through some tough nights and what have you oh, and i'm says, like, like so yeah I like your streams and i've seen two streams that some folks will oh yeah just start crying and like you, you, oh man it's kind of cool to have that community kind of like reach out and like kind of because you can't touch one another, so you kind of like they nope. were there for you, you know. Right. I, I like I even sat there and and, and, and fucking cried too, man, because I, I was yeah. so moved by it. That's because Norma was slapping you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, and if you watch my streams enough, I've I've cried on my own streams as well as watching other people stream. Um, it's you know it can be emotional. I mean these times are emotional for yeah, us. We've never be. we've never experienced anything like this. Uh, and, you know it, it, and it definitely hit me because it was like stop. It right. was like oh my god, what are we gonna do? And I got tired of practicing at the house. And then that's when I seen like he like he said D Nice was on there. I'm like, and everybody was just oh D Nice is this and that. And I'm like, but D Nice is. A, Raw, he's good, but the Bay Area, we got DJs just as good, but better, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, Facts. support us, you know. And then we all started getting on in, in the Instagram and the Facebook, and that's when the hate started happening. <laughs> they started yeah. cutting us off. <laughs> for you, how, how do you adjust from? I mean, did it stop for you completely, like it did for? Because you know, uh, food and, and entertainment oh, just yeah. goes hand in hand. How, how about for you, B? Did it, did it also put a stop to what you were doing, or? Did you, you know, you continue working. Oh, no. Well, I wasn't working for the whole year. Oh, really? And what about you, Chef? What well, I'm blessed that I still had my, re- my regular job that I have, you know, Monday through Friday. But I got a little nervous, I can lie. So that's why I started up, you know, this Awebo, you know. So, th- so Awebo was only starting. Is, is a result of the pandemic. Exactly. Because oh, if it wasn't for oh, that, man. you know, I would have still yeah. just. Because I my work, I travel all the time. You know? So, right, right. Hey, you know what? I have I had an opportunity to make a little side hustle. Why not? Because right. I didn't know what was going to happen, right? They could have been like, hey, you know what? Tomorrow, y'all out. Right, because so. I, remember, I remember seeing some posts that you were like flying out to Warner Brothers to go cook over there. Mm. I was like, man, this guy's cheap. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't, and I always thought that you had a level of creations as like, you know, you were doing this. I just started it uh, in December. December. You Whoa. hear that guy? December. Man, that, that's what, you know what? The pandemic, it, it brought a lot of people that were really creative. Oh, right? Taught us how to hustle. Right. Being a, being a creative <clears throat> on that side of the thing. And I think it was a little different for me because when, you, when you're when you somebody who does, uh, you know, I do web design. So, you, it's, it's, you know, I know I got friends who do graphic design and stuff like that. They're accustomed to being by themselves. And... And we're so intertwined with the internet that that's why our work is presented. I can put my stuff on the internet and you guys can still see it and I can get the same reaction. Where we're DJs, it's a, it's a lot different. But I found myself working more um, by myself and, 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 and getting more involved into what I do. And once, like Eddie, like Eddie did, he started uh, Webel's Creations, I started my clothing line during just, the pandemic, 521. 521. Yeah, you know, it, it just, it's, it, it, it's, and for a creative person, it's kind of weird when the world stops, you get more creative. Yeah. Because nobody's bothering you. So now I can just dive into whatever I'm doing and I can just go b- balls to the wall, you know? So 
it's, it was like, you know, I could see my DJ friends were like, like anxiety setting in because y'all had nothing to do. It's weird when somebody snatches everything you do from you. So, you know, and I'm, I'm glad uh, Twitch came along. And, yeah, it and, did. And like the, the dragon Rick Lee told me the other day, and a couple people pointed this out. I'm going to toot me and Brother Reese's horn. We was doing a show called Eagle Crushing for 10 years prior Love to Love Eagle this. Crushing. And we were streaming before all this. Yep, that, that is, those are facts. Since me yeah. and Malachi have been on there twice. Yes, yeah, so I was just like, oh, they just, they done stole our thunder. But, you know, I, I was glad to see people have found an outlet and have found streaming. DJs had found that streaming is you can you can do this and there is an audience for it. You can wow. get on here and you can you can you can develop your craft in front of a million people. Right. You know, you know, so it was and then you can connect with other DJs because Reese's connected with a lot of DJs Man. that he probably would have never came across. Never. And it's that's the that's the bond, because DJs have a big bond. Yeah. It's Especially when you, when you when when it's the guys who do it for the love. You know, when right. you got these these cats who are out here for the showman, for I wouldn't even call it showmanship, just the commercial side of it. It's different, you know. When when, when right. DJs that love it, you know, you meet these guys, and it'd be it'll be thirty or forty people watching your stream, but it's thirty people who love what you do, you know. And, and like I said, Reese's connected with a lot of house uh, DJs, so he can do his house thing other places. I mean, you know, you got people listening in Japan, Canada, Europe. You know, I, we connected with Kenny Grooves and, Kenny in, in, in the, in the he's UK. from the UK, and he watches our show. And it's like when we come on, it's like two in the morning there, and he watches our show. You know, so it, I think it's a it's a blessing. Uh, I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's no, the, we're going to be able to incorporate this with uh, yeah. when, when we go on on to do an event like at a club. I think there's going to be oh, yep. you know people going to have that <laughs> one signal out for their uh, <laughs> the live the yeah. line out to yeah. go for, I, for I Twitch, and I, I think, think it's great, great, man. Great promotional tool. I mean, if, yeah. if you got a club that's jumping and you you stream that thing for 10, 15 minutes, I guarantee your line going to get a little thicker. Yeah, and not only that, it's still going to be people that don't go out, but yeah. they still like that, that yeah. atmosphere and they want to look at it from their living room. Yeah. yeah, that'll be perfect. Yeah, so I think I think it's a it's a it's just a change in the game, you know. And I think being in the Bay, we hustle way different than anybody All else. All day. I don't care what nobody say. Right. We hustle way different than other people. So this was just like you. You give us lemons, shit. We gonna make that bomb ass lemonade. Right. You know, we, and we doing our thing now, man. I mean, it's, it's 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 in full swing right now. I mean, shit. The Bay doing their thing. You know, through the internet, cause you know we we we, we internet savvy <laughs> out here. But what's sure. so do. dope is like. For me, when I started following um, Chef Eddie, it's seeing all these different pop-ups. Yeah. And it's so neat to go to like a, an obscure place that I never thought existed in San Jose. Hermitage? In the yeah. cut. Yeah. In the cut. And it's in my own backyard, and I see this guy cooking, you know? Mm -hmm. Or he might, be, you know, he might be somewhere off a of commercial in 13th in an industrial area, because there's a restaurant. Pop up. I think that's phenomenal. Hermitage is a brewery, am I right, Eddie? Yeah. They, they have a beer? They have a beer. They have a, a lot of beers. Okay. Some really good beers over there, too. Mm. Mm -hmm. So join us this Sunday. Oh, so you'll be out there this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Hermit Lucky, what, time? Yeah. what time, Eddie? So this Sunday, I'm going to be with uh, Big Daddy's Barbecue and Baby Boy, and then V's going to be there from 1 to 6 at Hermitage. Hermitage uh, Brewery. It's gonna San be Jose. Off, yeah, San Jose. It's going to be off the hook. We're going to be throwing away kind of like a twist on a Cinco de Mayo menu. Okay. You know, always doing fusion, always having fun with food. Yeah. You got, you got anything there, right? coming mm -hmm. up, Mal? Um, anything special? Because I noticed you've been back. Did you play Hello Stranger or were you just hanging out? No. Um, every other Friday I'm at Hello Stranger. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, 20, they're at 25% uh, capacity on the okay. inside. It's nice, though. Yeah. Um, people are socially distanced. They have their masks on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the most part. But, uh, you know, a lot of us are getting vaccinated or are vaccinated at this mm -hmm. point. So, uh, no, it's good to see people back out and, you know, hanging out. It's good, it's good to see faces. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's good to, you know, good as much as I have fun DJing on Twitch, there's nothing like, you know. Human interaction. Seeing, yeah, seeing folks, you know, smiling and laughing and, you know, kind of, you know, there's that sense of normalcy that kind of, yeah. you know. They're seeing them live yeah, and out on the it, screen. It feels good. What yeah. you got brewing technique? Right now, I got nothing brewing, man. Uh, uh, ain't, nobody's hit me. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. You know, uh, the Twitch is for me right now, you know, I, and, and I think I'm, I'm loving it. At first, I was, like, against the Twitch, but right. I did it anyway. But now I'm starting to fall in love. He's the one, him and Mark Maiden, 
We're the ones. Mark yeah, my brother. Shout, shout out, out to Mark, Mark Maiden. Man. He's a dope. Jeez. Mark Maiden. Dude. Oh. Dope dude. Nicest too. guy, too. Nice that is, dude. Man, smartest guy, nicest guy. Well, I'm smarter guy. than him, but go ahead. And Mark he's funny. Maiden. But yeah, um, <laughs> Mark was the one that he was like on Twitch ahead of anybody from right. what I remember. And then uh, when Malachi got on, I was like, yeah, I got to get on. And Malachi is the one who's taught me everything. I'm still learning everything from Twitch. So he's the one that teaches me, no, you need to do blah, 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 blah. In the middle of me spinning, he's, dude, you need to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, how do I do that? <laughs> you know, it's like I'm trying to learn, and, and he schools me. Yeah. As, and he's always schooled me on everything I do as far as DJing. Because, you know, I'm not going to I'm, I'm, hey, I'm rusty. Yeah. And, and and he's the one that, that checks me like, nah, nah, you need to do this or nah, don't do that. Or, you need to start doing blah, blah, blah. He, he does that. And that's why anything, he he's he's my mentor, you know? Okay. So, I love it. Reese, what you got popping? Well, are you know, you um, yeah, yeah. I'm, all the private events are starting to come out, uh, come back, you know. So I'm, I'm booked tomorrow doing a private event. Um, I also DJ at Burrito Factory here in South San Jose, the Gavelin. What, um, when is that? Yeah, off the Poughkeepsie and Blossom Hill every other Friday. So I'll, I will be there next. Oh, you know what? No more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there next Friday. Next Friday? Yes. Yeah, next Friday. Yes, I'll be there next Friday. Yeah, I ain't got nothing. Look at these two. I ain't got nothing. I oh, don't worry. I'm not DJing nowhere near. <laughs> well, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, but it's coming back, man. I'm it's coming saying, back. I'm just working on 521 and uh, 521 is conversations the with the DJs. And, there you go. Uh, there you go. Soul Parlor. And Soul Parlor. Soul you can parlor. catch me and Reese every Wednesday, 6 Eight. Eight. Yeah, like, I, I, I definitely, so. man. I look, I look forward to so far. Thank you, Thank you do. Thank I you, so man. look forward to so far because sometimes I work overtime. That's why we moved the time back so you could catch us. <laughs> and I appreciate that because I be at work processing checks and everything else, and I'm like, I need something to listen to. These two dudes, and and I tell you one thing, you guys on so far play stuff. I'm like, where the heck did you get that? <laughs> and and I'm just like. Thank you, brother. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a lot of digging. I, 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 and I have to be honest, I do steal from Mal. I, I steal from Mal all the time. I Shazam Mal sets and, and my man Kenny Grooves over in the UK, man. Shout out to Kenny Grooves. The UK is on a whole different vibe as far as yes. soul, and the DJs are really pushing it. So Kenny Grooves has a show. If you go on Mixcloud, look up Kenny Grooves. I'm going to check him out. And yeah. he has a lot of good vibe. He make me break out Shazam every show. I'm like, I he can play a whole, he does like an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And he can play a bunch of stuff I ain't never heard. The yeah. whole album. I mean, I, good I, it's Lord. hard for me to hear the radio because I grew up with yeah, radio. I now I was like, man, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to Little Louis Vega on Wednesday on Twitch for two and a half, three hours. And that, isn't that great, though? We can tune in to Jeff on a Saturday morning. Yeah, right. You so, know, on a yeah. Friday, listen to Jazzy Spina, Jeff. bro. Yeah. Oh. And was, you, know, you don't get to see Jeff often, even yeah. on a regular basis. Get to go hear Mal play on Sunday morning when I'm waking up to have my coffee. This is oh, the easy like vibe. Sunday mornings. Yes, That's what yes. it is. It's easy. Yeah, his is easy like Sunday morning. Yeah, we got, see, we the Black Latinos, everybody, we 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 uh we got our own little soul vibe. So yep. Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings, it starts with Mal. Right. Love on love radio. Love love radio. What's that? Ten to eleven, eleven thirty. Yeah, about ten to eleven thirty. Then me and brother Reese do uh we do soul parlor six to eight. Mm -hmm on Twitch yep. and Mixed Cloud and it's Saturday mornings Technique does Saturday, Saturday Soul Saturday Soul 10 to 12 10 to 12 on Twitch and then Mal comes back and he should easy like Sunday morning I think that that either it starts the week or it ends the week however you want to say your yeah. Sunday is but that, that that 9 to 12 easy like Sunday Perfect. morning show when I sit in bed I don't, I, can, yeah. I don't get out to bed until <laughs> 12 o'clock because I have to listen to it and and the crazy thing about about all of our sets is they're they're all soul, but yeah. they're all our own so twist in different. it and different, yeah. you know. So different. And me, I try to incorporate the old school. So right, yeah, right, too. yeah. I try to. No, it's, it's and a blue eye. <laughs> just between us, I mean, we cover all different aspects. So all you of can it. hear new wave music with Mel on, on Wednesdays, Wednesday, new yeah. Wednesdays. You can hear soulful house music with me on soulful house music on yep. Thursdays from seven to nine. Then here Tay and I playing, you know, neo soul. On, uh, I, right after his show, I do this uh, Ray train called The Mix, and I play everything. I'll pick that out. Yeah, um, so I play I mean, vinyl, Twitch and I'll play 45, yeah. or we'll play, Twitch you know. You use that old mix, the, 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 the rotary. The rotary, yeah. 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 I can never learn the rotary. Yeah. Man, I played all my shit, and I was tripping out. He was, and he acted like, he, he felt like he'd been playing on it for years. A lot of guys are very intimidated by it. They don't I'm the play. intimidated. And Mal I do Funky Fridays. 
doing tricks and shit. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, man. So, I mean, so follow us on all the socials, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody, go to Conversations with the DJ. Follow us on yes. all platforms. We'll be doing this again. Uh, we'll let you guys know. Yes, indeed. Um, and look out for, like I said, when Rona go, when Rona go away, the Black and is about to do something really uh, nasty. Yeah, like. you know how it go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you might see Eddie, Eddie in the, in, Chef Eddie in the club cooking some steaks. You Come know? on. <laughs> what? We, we gonna flip it different. And we gonna get in the microphone and the know, instrumental. We gonna have some fun. <laughs> so I wanna thank everybody for tuning in. Yes, sir. Following us. Yes. Supporting us. Thank yes. you. It, liking it. We really appreciate it. Thank y'all. I was so, excited about this. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do next. I know who is going to be next. I do, too. I ain't going to say. Nah. But uh, <laughs> I actually know the next couple shows. But y'all follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and you'll, you'll know. You want to follow. Yeah, follow. Absolutely. And uh, we, we, we'll check in next time. Um, another think, shout out to Chef Eddie. Yeah, Chef Eddie. And, and, v. and, v. and, v. and v. Yes. Yeah, I'm, thank I'm, you. Thank yes. you. I'm just going to go home and smear cheesecake. So I'm, I'm, ready to just, I'm ready to log off and eat. So we're going to like for real eat now. That yeah. was just yeah. the testing. <laughs> but I'm like, that wasn't enough for me. That was teasing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see y'all uh, the 14th. Eddie, is that, is that what we decided on? The 14th is yep. the next show? Yes, the date. Well, we'll post who's going to be on. So we out of here. Wait, before you do that, yes. when it comes to the East Bay, we'll, me and Malachi will let you know so we can all go on over there and hang out with him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. For sure. We're going to do it real nice. So uh, thanks again for everybody supporting. And the Black Latinos is checking out. Peace. Peace. Peace.